in the snow of South Bend. It's the final home game for Notre Dame as legendary coach Joe Paterno leads his 22nd ranked Penn State Nittany Lions onto this Notre Dame field for the final time. Penn State will join the Big Ten next season, so this is the last game against Notre Dame. And Paterno and the Nittany Lions have beaten the Irish two straight times. Penn State headed to the Blockbuster Bowl, a record of 6-3. and three. That's after a 5-0 and oh start, but they had an open date last week. That gives them two weeks to prepare for this game. Joe Paterno hoping to get his Nittany Lions emotionally ready for this big game. They have some offensive weapons. Richie Anderson, O.J. McDuffie, chief among them. Some of the seniors just introduced to this crowd for the final time, making their final home appearance. And the Notre Dame team has dedicated this game to their seniors, hoping they will all play like a champion today. Tears were shed at the pep rally last night as the seniors faced the student body as football team members for the final time at home. And the seniors introduced to this crowd sold out for the 106th straight time. 20 scholarship seniors making their final appearance on this field. The third winningest recruiting class of all time at Notre Dame. And another giant of the coaching ranks, Lou Holtz, sending his Irish onto the Notre Dame field. It's another below freezing afternoon in South Bend. Game time temperature 31 degrees with a brisk wind from the north. We're expecting an inch or two of snow accumulation possible before the afternoon is over. Hello, everyone, and welcome to South Bend, Indiana, Notre Dame Stadium. Tom Hammond and Chris Collinsworth with this match between two teams headed for postseason play, but headed in opposite directions in recent weeks. Notre Dame, of course, comes off that great win over Boston College. Penn State, Chris, though, has lost three of their last four games. Yeah, and it all started against Miami, a game that Penn State could have won. Joe Paterno really blames himself for getting his team too jacked up for that one, and emotionally, they just haven't been the same since. But they've had a week off, had a chance to go back and work on some fundamentals and Lou Holtz is sure that he will see the team that played so well against Miami. Notre Dame's All-American fullback Jerome Bettis will not start. He has a lingering ankle injury. But the big question for the Irish is the physical status of their quarterback, Rick Meyer. Now, Rick Meyer spent the day in the infirmary yesterday. He was unable to keep down any food, but the good news is he got up this morning, held down his breakfast, and should be ready to go. But the question has to be his endurance. How long can he go? Can he make it four quarters here today? Well, of course, the weather conditions could play a part in the outcome of this game. For more on that, let's go to the sideline and John Dockery. Doc? You know, Tom, this is a day for real football. The weather conditions are worsening as we speak. You mentioned it was in the 30s. Well, the wind chill probably brings it down more into the teens. And they're talking about a temperature drop of 20 to 25 degrees. You see the snow flurries coming down. The field has been covered all week, though it's slightly slippery. And yesterday, Joe Paterno was talking about the weather conditions as possibly helping his team, especially the wind, which would neutralize the fine passing game with the Irish. So weather conditions today, if they were, will favor Penn State, the underdog, and Joe Paterno. Tom? <laughs> Some of the students don't mind the conditions, obviously, as we look at the series record. And as we said, this is the last meeting between the two, so a Notre Dame win today means the series will be tied forever. Penn State, the winner the last two times they have met. Penn State won the toss. They defer to the second half, so Notre Dame will receive to start the game. Holds Irish ranked eighth in the nation, headed for a New Year's Day Bowl. Joe Paterno's Nittany Lions headed for the Blockbuster Bowl. Musillo with a kickoff, and it's a short kick. Fair catch called for and taken by Notre Dame. And they'll have great field position to start just short of their 40-yard line. Here are the starting lineups now for Notre Dame. The number one total offense team in the nation. Rick Meyer needs only six yards to take over the Irish all-time lead in total offense. The rest of the lineup, Brooks leads the nation averaging 8.3 yards a carry. And in the line, Nat Norman and Hall making their final home appearance today. 
Meyer hands to Brooks on first down. It's spin move by Brooks. Nets him only about three yards before he's tackled by Willie Smith at an inside linebacker spot. Here's the Penn State defense. On the defensive line, Taroka Jackson now recovered from an ankle injury. Their best pass rusher, Givens, also hobbled by injury when healthy. One of the best in the college ranks. Secondary has been victimized in recent games. Derek Bonner made a key short yardage tackle of Jerome Bettis, though, in the Penn State win over Notre Dame last season. Brooks in motion. Myers' first pass is complete to Gerald. Adrian Gerald pulls his way to midfield. And with that pass, Rick Meyer has just become Notre Dame's all-time total offense leader. It went for nine yards, and he breaks Burline's record at Notre Dame. Here's a look at the total yardage up to date, including that nine-yard pass. Rick Meyer in Notre Dame's storied history is the all-time total offense leader. Brooks coming from a wing spot, and Penn State was ready for that. They stop him for a loss of one on the play. Tom, that was the formation that they used so effectively against Boston College last week. The wing back with Reggie Brooks in that formation. They used the inside trap here to try and spring Brooks, but it was not to be as uh, Phil Yaboa Cody came up to make the tackle. Yaboa Cody leads Penn State in tackles this season, a native of Canada. Derek Mays into the game, sprint wide to the left as they send three wideouts left. That's Brooks on the wing. No running backs behind Meyer. Dean Lytle is to the right. Meyer pumps. Across the middle to Earl Smith, the tight end. And Smith tripped up inside the Penn State 35. Another Irish first down. Marlon Forbes made the stop after a 15-yard game. Nice job by Rick Meyer. They had the out and up as an audible on the outside to Derek Mays. It wasn't there. Penn State playing very conservatively in the secondary. They come right back to Herb Smith. Nice job of patience by Rick Meyer. 16th reception of the season for the senior Smith out of Browns Mills, New Jersey. Here's the wingback formation again. Wing right is Brooks. Myers pass deflected at the line of scrimmage and still caught, I think, by Gerald. Joe Paterno told us yesterday that this Notre Dame offense is better than their 1988 national championship team. Meyer got lucky there. The ball was tipped, and Gerald's still able to come up with the catch. Gerald, a senior from Athens, Georgia, with his second reception of the day. He only had six coming into the game, and Rick Meyer, despite that deflection, three for three to start the game. Irish driving, opening series of the contest. Might be another audible by Meyer. Dawson couldn't quite make the catch off his hands. Well covered by Shelly Hammonds. Nice play that time by Shelly Hammonds. He began each of the last two seasons at defensive back before moving back to running back, and he may be the best open field runner on this Penn State team. He averaged 5.8 yards per carry, which is better than either of the starting backs for Penn State this year. Joe Paterno said, I feel good about having Hammonds in our secondary until I watch him on film as a running back last year. Seventh play of the Notre Dame drive, they're third and six. Meyer scrambles and finds the open man. Irv Smith has his second catch of the game. He has a Notre Dame first down at the Penn State 15. That play covered 14 yards. Tom, of the 93 drives that Rick Meyer has started this year, more than half have put points on the board. That is a remarkable stat, and 44% of those drives have resulted in touchdowns. Myers had the hot hand lately. Over the last four games, he's hit 65% of his passes. Nine touchdowns, only one interception. Lytle. Thrown back after he gained a couple. That's only the third rushing play for Notre Dame. They've passed it five times already. And, of course, there is where you might expect to see Jerome Bettis, who's not in the game, his replacement Lytle getting the carry. 
Well, they have the rules about practice. If you don't practice on certain days during the week, then you don't get a chance to start. But Dean Lytle is a very fast fullback, maybe as fast as any fullback in the country. He set the conference record in the 200 meters during the indoor track season this year, and he was undefeated in that race in high school. Number four is Lee Beckton, who replaces Brooks in the Notre Dame backfield. He's in motion and gets the handoff. Lytle throws a great block, and Bro uh, uh, Beckton tripped up, fell forward for another couple of yards. Becton is the third leading rusher on this team, averaging 5.6 yards per carry. Ordinarily, that would uh, make you an All-American candidate on a lot of teams, but with Bettis and Brooks and Zellers and all the big numbers that these Notre Dame backs have put up, it just kind of puts you uh, as a member of the crowd here. Joe Paterno's defense trying to hold off Notre Dame on the 10th play of the drive coming up. 10.40 left in the first quarter, opening series of the game. Laying handoff to Beckton. Beckton broke one tackle, got inside the 10 down to the eight yard line. Lee Rubin coming up from the free safety spot to make the stop for Penn State. And now Lou Holtz with a decision to make on fourth down. And he sends his kicker, Hendrick, onto the field. Lou Holtz decides to go with the draw play on fourth down, a fairly conservative call. 26-yard field goal attempt by Hendrick, the senior kicker, who's hit six of nine field goals this season, 32 being his longest. That was a week ago against Boston College. And the kick is good. Craig Hendrick hits from 26 yards out. Notre Dame, given great field position to open the game, comes up with an opening three-point lead. Notre Dame football is brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. By Radio Shack, America's technology store. Nobody compares. By John Nuveen and Company, quality tax-free investment since 1898. And by HP LaserJet Printers. If it isn't a laser jet, it's only a laser printer. Fighting Irish get a short kickoff to start the game and record three points as Hendrick kicks off with McDuffie and Morris deep for Penn State. This will be Morris from the five. Behind the wedge, Morris bounces off tacklers to the outside. Nice return all the way out to the 38-yard line where Jeff Burris makes the tackle, a 33-yard return. Here's the Penn State starting offense. The quarterback, Kerry Collins, starting his third game. He's thrown three touchdown passes, one interception. He stepped in when John Saka was injured. In the backfield, Anderson leads the nation in scoring 17 touchdowns. McDuffie needs four catches to set the Penn State record. Offensive line anchored by E.J. Sandusky, son of longtime defensive coordinator Jerry Sandusky. Split backs in the backfield, O'Neal and Anderson. In reverse, McDuffie fumbled it and then gets away from a couple of tacklers to midfield and a Penn State first down. Tom Carter made a saving tackle and went for 12 yards despite the bobble by McDuffie. What a huge play on this play by, by Tom Carter. He was blocked. They almost fumbled the handoff, almost fumbled the exchange. A very gutsy call by Joe Paterno on the very first play of the game. Watch number 13, Tom Carter. Simply, if he does not make the play, that is a touchdown. So Penn State with a first down at midfield. This is Anderson. Flag down as Anderson gains five to the 45-yard line. First penalty of the game will be assessed. Ronald Winter of the Big Ten is the referee. This is an all Big Ten crew. Richie Anderson's teammate, Rich McKenzie, said that when Richie Anderson is on the field, you just hold your breath. If he finds a crack, he can be in the end zone in seconds. One of the most dynamic players in college football leads the nation in scoring. Anderson has had some subpar games in big games, but it's because Penn State's been behind. Illegal motion against the Nittany Lions. Joe Paterno's team penalized five yards, negating a five-yard gain. Interesting that he comes out on the first play of the game and runs that reverse. Joe Paterno obviously feeling like that uh, he can leave nothing in the bag here this afternoon. And he doesn't like the call, not even a little bit. Illegal procedure, offense, five-yard penalty from the previous spot, repeat first down. 
See if we can pick up the procedure call. That was grieve in motion. And uh, I didn't see anything on that replay. Of course, the only thing that is possible is he may have been moving towards the line of scrimmage. That may have been the call. He went across the picture and may have turned up too early. Right. First pass by Collins results in a Notre Dame sack all the way back to the 40. McGill and Young converge on Collins and take him down on the first passing attempt of the day for Penn State. Let's take a look at that starting Notre Dame defensive unit. They've been susceptible to the pass early in the season, but played well a week ago. Devon McDonald leads the team in sacks. He and DeBose likely headed to the NFL next season. Anthony Peterson from Pennsylvania, the top tackler. That's the secondary. Burris has five interceptions. Carter has four. Terry Collins starred at BYU two weeks ago. Paterno said Collins was jittery early, saying the crowd bothered him, but eventually he settled down. But unfortunately, they were behind 30 to 3 at that point. Draw play on second and 20. It's Brian O'Neill who gets five yards of it back, and it'll be third and long for Penn State after Peterson and Flanagan make the tackle. And third down conversions is where Notre Dame has made a tremendous improvement defensively. Last week against Boston College, Lou Holtz's defense uh, stopped BC on third down 12 of 13 times. 12 of 13 times. That is a remarkable stat. Demetrius DeBose was telling us there were very few missed defensive assignments in that game. Everybody was on the same page and looked at it. A line stunt and a pass. Intercepted. The ball deflected. John Covington and Tom Carter right there together, and Notre Dame off the deflected pass makes the interception of Collins. Just a poor read by Kerry Collins. It was a zone on the outside. Tom Carter just sitting and waiting for Ryan Greve to come out. And then John Covington making the nice interception. Poor read by Kerry Collins, the Penn State quarterback. And watch this, watch this one-handed cradle of the ball by Covington, his third interception. Big play by the defense of Notre Dame. Notre Dame with the lead and set to put the ball in play after the interception just short of midfield. Rick Myers hit four of his first five passes. Play action here. Irv Smith with his third catch of the game. Bowling his way inside the 35-yard line. 17 yards. Big Irv Smith telling us yesterday he was going to block out the fact that this was his final home game. And though he'd like to have a few more receptions, his blocking had gone to a new level. Looks good receiving the ball here. Yeah, he really does. And he says that the strength of his game is catching the football. He doesn't get a chance to do it very often, but he wants America to know that he is a good receiver. He wants America to know or the pro scouts to know? Well, just a couple of those guys. <laughs> and the Lytle dodges one man and then piles straight ahead inside the 25-yard line. Notre Dame got it going on the ground and through the air at the moment. That one went nine yards for Dean Lytle, who has replaced Bettis in the lineup, and Bettis has yet to see action. Let's go down to John Dockery. You know, Tom, talking to Joe Paterno yesterday, one of the things he was most worried about, it's almost a self-fulfilling prophecy, was an early turnover. What happens to Penn State early? A lousy kick. Notre Dame comes down, gets a field goal, and then on the ensuing offensive series, a turnover. So right now, Joe Paterno is perturbed. You saw him with the officials before on that call, and he's worried about his team. They need a confidence builder right now, especially in this first quarter. If they get behind early, which they are now three to nothing, if it goes to ten to nothing, Penn State could be in trouble. Lee Rubin, the Nittany Lions free safety, shaken up on the play, able to come to the sideline under his own power. I really like the game plan by Lou Holt so far. It's been wide open. We talked about Brooks and Bettis at the top of the show, but so far it's been all Rick Meyer. Here's Reggie Brooks. Slammed down after a short gain, and I think short of the first down. They only needed a yard. I don't believe he gained that much. Is Phil Yaboa Cody from Montreal, Canada, leading tackler for the Nittany Lions, stopped right up the middle. Now third and one, maybe less than one, and... Notre Dame in short yardage situations this year as Jeff Burris checks into the ball game. On third down or in two or less, they are 16 for 18 on the season. 
They'll line up in that old-fashioned straight T formation with Burris, normally a safety on the defense end. Zellers is also in. And straight ahead is Ray Zellers. Zellers picking up the Notre Dame first down as they go to their power run formation. Joe Paterno said that defensively, we haven't been able to stop anybody lately in Penn State's last three games against Boston College, West Virginia, and Brigham Young. The defense has given up 102 points and lost two of those three games. And of course, when Penn State gets behind, they have to come out of their normal game plan, which is based around the run. And it radically alters the way they approach a game if they get behind early. Back to the wing back set. Thank to Brooks. Meyer can't get away from the rush. Penn State comes up with its first sack of the game, and it goes to Todd Berger. Backup nose tackle, a senior out of Clark, New Jersey. Former offensive tackle. Rick Meyer had Irv Smith wide open on this play. They had it set up perfectly. Eric Clare came up the field and got contained quickly on Rick Meyer. Watch Irv Smith, he's going to pop completely free, fake the block down, and then just simply wide open in the flat. Rick Meyer couldn't find him. Meyer got rid of it. Lytle can't get it, and it's intercepted by Penn State. Interception made by Penn State's Lee Rubin, who had been shaken up a couple of plays earlier, returns to the field for his second pick of the season, and a rare turnover by Rick Meyer. That's only his fifth interception of the season. He threw a floater, Tom. He threw it off his back foot, let it hang in the air too long. He tried to get it to Dean Lytle. It looked like Lytle was wide open and could just drift on down the field. But that simply was not the case as Lee Rubin stepped in for the interception and give new life to Penn State. Meyer with a rare interception. Rubin picked it off. While we were away, Lou Holtz having a talk with his quarterback, Rick Meyer, after that interception. And I'm sure Chris asking how he feels. Yeah, that has to be the first question, but also a little explanation on how you can't just float the ball down the middle of the field. So Notre Dame unable to take advantage of the Penn State turnover. They give it right back to the Nittany Lions. A lot of shifting by the defensive line of Notre Dame as the play unfolds. And it's a handoff to Anderson. Richie Anderson shows that great running ability. He rips off about six yards before he's tackled by Demetrius DuBose. Richie Anderson has almost triple the number of attempts of any other back on this team, averaging 4.6 yards per carry. Is supposed to be one of the best backs in the country at diving over the pile and getting it into the end zone. His 17 touchdowns certainly speaks to that. Leads the nation in scoring, 17 touchdowns. That tie is tied for the second mark on the Penn State list, tying John Capaletti, 1973. Lydell Mitchell had 29. He holds the record. Collins pass broken up. Intended for Justin Williams and Tom Carter, the man that broke it up. Ron Cooper, the defensive backfield coach, yesterday. Look at Joe Paterno. He doesn't like it again. Joe has been red hot early in this one. He sees his team with a chance to get in it. Let's see if Carter gets there too early. Close. In general, as long as the defensive back is looking back for the ball and is making his motion towards the football, they're not going to call that. I think that's good coverage. Third and two for Penn State. Anderson with one of the dives that you mentioned, getting the first down to the 40. Bobby Taylor, the freshman in there trying to stop him, but as you predicted, Anderson airborne for the first. Well, I'm a believer now. He got he got way up on this one. Watch this. All the way over the pile and flies for about three or four yards. Woo! And a first down. About five yards. Well, you know, he used to average over 20 points a game in basketball. He showed his jumping ability out of Sandy Spring, Maryland. Collins. Down the sideline. Thomas with a catch. Trying to stay in bounds. He stepped out. At about the 14. And the flag. 
Tyson Thomas, a senior out of York, Pennsylvania, with only his eighth catch of the season as Collins spotted him down the sideline for 46 yards. And it looks like they may be tacking on a little more to that. Thomas stepped out of bounds, and then I couldn't tell if it was Burris or Taylor that may have hit him late on down the field. Dead ball, first foul against the defense. The stakes will be set, first down. The penalty will be administered half the distance to the goal. Now this is a tough call if these young men just did not hear the whistle and then tried to go after Tyson Thomas. They may not have known that he was out of bounds. Let's see. Goes out right there. Now the official's going to begin to blow the whistle there. Oh, Ooh. that's why. Uh, Burris, Burris with a forearm to the head. That's what drew the flag, and rightfully so. That officially qualifies as the snow begins to rip down as a personal foul. Good call. look from the end zone. Joe Paterno comes right out with the rollout pass. They're going to try and dump it quickly in the flat and just overthrows it a bit. They weren't looking for much. That was a ball possession type of throw. They wanted four or five yards. Get it down inside the five yard line. Take two cracks at it from there. Notre Dame has taken a timeout. Demetrius DeBoe is not happy with what he had on the field. And defensively, Notre Dame will spend a timeout. With all the problems that Penn State has had in the past four ball games, losing three of those four, a big moment for Joe Paterno's squad here early in this ball game to jump out in front of Notre Dame, a team that uh, has just been burying people as of late would give his, his squad a real emotional lift. And Paterno talked about going back to the fundamentals, and you can see it. Uh, this team's doing a nice job of blocking. They're not trying to overwhelm this Notre Dame defense. And, uh, of course, the big play with Tyson Thomas down the sideline. Hope you'll be with us tomorrow for NFL action starting at 12.30 p.m. Eastern time with NFL Live. Then most of you will see the Oilers take on the Minnesota Vikings, two of the top offenses in the NFL. Some of you will see the Seahawks face the Raiders in an AFC West showdown or regional action. Check your local listings. Kerry Collins, who emerged from spring practice as Penn State's number one quarterback before breaking his finger in a family volleyball game trying to spike Trying to direct Penn State to a touchdown in the lead. Second and goal. Fake the pitch. Hands straight ahead to O'Neal. O'Neal plowing head. I said second and goal. It was actually second and three. They can pick up a first down, and it will be close. Collins says they got it. Got a good matchup on the outside should Joe Paterno choose to exploit it. O.J. McDuffie, their All-American candidate, one-on-one -on -one against Tom Carter. Ron Cooper, the defensive backfield coach, said that if we're going to get in a one-on-one -on -one situation with McDuffie, I want it to be Carter. If we'll double him, I'll use Carter elsewhere. First down. It will be first and goal for the Nittany Lions. Spot the ball at the four-yard line. Brian Hamilton into the defensive line for Notre Dame, replacing Junior Bryant. Anderson over the top. He shift out of the power eye to split backs. Tried to go airborne did Anderson and couldn't get there. Stopped by the Notre Dame defense. Demetrius DeBose right in the middle of things. 
And Jeff Burris was looking for one major mid-air collision that time with Richie Anderson and Demetrius DeBose, he's fired up. Richie Anderson was quoted in the paper as saying that once he breaks the line of scrimmage that he could run over any linebacker that Notre Dame has. Demetrius DeBose wasn't too crazy about that comment. Second and goal from the two. Eighth play of the drive that began after an interception. Anderson. Again, stopped. They're ready for it. They know what Richie Anderson likes to do. Come right over the top. Watch the number of bodies flying in midair. Boom. Right there, the collision. Nice job. This is just simply a case. Penn State knows what they're going to do. Notre Dame knows it. You get one more crack at it. Third and a yard. Same play. There's a flag down. So Ron Winter saying offside Notre Dame, the touchdown stands. Okay, now, do you want the penalty assist here? Joe Paterno's team taking the Meyer interception, marching down for the go-ahead score. Richie Anderson certainly is not faint of heart. Three times in a row he goes up over the top knowing that he's going to get smacked around pretty good. That time just enough. Watch Anthony Peterson trying for the mid-air collision. But J.T. Morris got just enough of Anthony Peterson to prevent him from jumping and meeting Richie Anderson in midair. Snow coming down with a vengeance now as the extra point attempt is up. And blocked by Notre Dame. Was it DuBose? No, let's see. Who was it that got in there? It might have been Bobby Taylor, the freshman. We know the great jumping ability of Taylor. Texas 5A Basketball Player of the Year, and it sure was Bobby Taylor with the block. Still, Penn State has the lead. The snow at Notre Dame Stadium coming down nearly in chunks now, almost obscuring the mosaic on the side of the Hesburgh Library. In the distance, the house that Rockney built, Notre Dame Stadium sold out for the 106th consecutive time. Penn State just driving down the field 72 yards for the go-ahead touchdown point after blocked at 6-3 Nittany Lions. Masillo's kick again a short one and taken by one of the up backs. Fumble. Notre Dame got it back. Brian King knocked the ball loose. Lee Becton was able to recover it for the Irish. No, it was Miller that went back to get it I guess. And what Penn State and Joe Paterno is doing they don't want Mike Miller to get his hands on the football. He runs about a 4 3 40. He's had a great deal of success on kickoff returns this year. And it looked like uh, Lee Becton may be injured on the play. He's had an injured shoulder. It looks like that right shoulder that is dragging a bit as he comes off. Here's the hit that caused the fumble and also injured Becton. Ooh. First down at the 22 for the Irish. Now trailing by three. Brooks finds a running rule on the right side and is just tripped up. Brooks, who had carried three times for only three yards prior to that one, was tripped up by Brian Gelheiser, or he was off to the races. Watch how Reggie Brooks is holding onto the ball. Obviously, with all the snow and the poor conditions, he does not want to fumble. Nice job that time by Dean Lytle tying up Gelheiser, who just made a shoestring tackle. I tell you, Reggie Brooks in the open field, very, very, very dangerous. Becton having that right shoulder looked after on the sideline. Lytle. Lytle bursts free, then fumbles the football. It's still loose, and Penn State recovers. Shelly Hammonds fell on the ball after Reggie Gibbons had knocked it loose. Second Notre Dame turnover as Lytle 
fumbles. It's like a dream for Joe Paterno. This is what he needed. His defense has struggled in the past few weeks. They needed some breaks. He told us yesterday he needed something positive to happen early in this ball game. And so far it has. The interception by Rick Meyer, and now the fumble by Dean Lytle. Ball was stripped by Gibbons. Hammonds recovered. First down, Nittany Lions. Collins. That one was nearly picked off by Greg Lane of Notre Dame. Dangerous pass. He threw into double coverage, and Lane nearly had an interception and probably a touchdown. I really don't know what Kerry Collins is doing. He uh, looks a little unsettled, and he wouldn't be the first guy that we have seen come in here at the quarterback position and have problems early in the ball game. A lot of very dangerous passes out in the flat, and what you don't want to do because of the effort of your defense is now all of a sudden give up a cheap touchdown with your offense. Collins' only completion was a big one, though, 46 yards to set up their touchdown. Anderson. Tackled after a gain of one or two. Let's go down to John Dockery. Got those ears warm, Doc? I'm trying to keep warm, John. As you can see, the snow is starting to stick on the ground here and making it a little more slippery. That's part of the reason besides that, it's very cold down here. Wind chill has to be in the in the low teens. And there's one other factor. The wind is starting to whip kind of left to right. So right now, the end of the quarter is coming. So the wind factor will change as Penn State will get the wind in the second quarter, Tom. Well, bad weather generally favors the underdog. Right now, the underdog has the lead. 6-3, Penn State after one. Meyer. Yes! Brooks! Tom Hammond, Chris Collinsworth, John Dockery from Notre Dame Stadium and the kind of weather football was designed for. <laughs> and remember, everybody's talking about third down for this Notre Dame defense. Last year, Penn State converted 60% of the time. Today, two for three. Collins. Under oh. pressure, misses his man. Wide, Brian. Right. wide open. Absolutely wide open going down the field was Brian O'Neill and Kerry Collins just overthrowing. That could have been a very big play for Penn State. The safeties were gone. Well, they were kind of close. <laughs> what about visibility in the snow this thick? I mean, the cameras don't give uh, the true picture. It's got to be difficult to see at field level. Yeah, the worst part is the snowflakes will hit your eyes from time to time. It can be very difficult as a wide receiver running down the field just to look back and have a snowflake hit you in the eye. First punt of the game for either side. Jamie Grease. Miller, if he can find it, makes the catch and then is hit and dropped after about a three-yard game. Let's go to New York now for a college football update with Jim Lampley. Look at one of the most entertaining plays of the entire season. Gino Toretta trying for a touchdown pass to Horace Copeland. Copeland thinks he has the TD catch. As the official says, incomplete. Copeland with the back flip. I got your back flip right here, says Keita Crespina of Temple. Later, Toretta completed the drive with a touchdown pass to Kevin Furkite. It's 34 Miami nothing. 34-0 Miami, I should say, in the third quarter. A backflip back to you guys. <laughs> Tom, if I do a backflip, will you do one? <laughs> yeah. uh, number six belongs to Jerome Bettis. Time for him to make his first appearance of the game. Bettis, the All-American fullback, number two rusher for the Irish. He's gained 668 yards coming into this contest, as you see, averaging five and a half a carry. Well, this is fullback weather. That's what Lou Holtz wants to get done. He, he wants to get back to the fundamentals of this offense, which is Brooks and Bettis. The thing that we have seen is that neither of these players are as good without the other. But when they're both in the backfield at the same time, explosive things happen. Looks like they're going to punt this one again. I didn't see a flag, but it may be hard to see one <laughs> on that field. It took a while for him to sort it out, that's for sure. This is just fun. This is more fun. <laughs> yeah, this is fun. If we close these windows in here, it'd be a lot more fun. Yeah, I know. They, uh, just the snow, and, but as the conditions get worse, 
it certainly does favor Penn State, especially with the lead. So Dries will kick again. And Miller calls for a fair catch at his own 20-yard line. 38-yard punt by Penn State, and the Irish offense now retakes the field. Meyer with a last-second conference with Lou Holtz. And you have to wonder how Rick is feeling. A lot of times when you have the stomach virus or whatever, you begin to get the chills. So, let's go down to John Dockery. Yes, Tom, I'm down here in the field, and the conditions are getting worse, but I just got an update on Rick Meyer. He's fine. He had an upset stomach a little bit yesterday. Bettis is absolutely fine. People were bewildered he wasn't playing earlier. Back to you, Tom. Bettis is in there now, but only the block for Meyer, and he can't do the job as the Penn State defense collapses for its second sack of Meyer today. Man-to-man -man defense that time in the secondary. Joe Paterno generally does not like to play man-to-man, -man, but it works here. Able to put some pressure on Meyer. No one open down the field. That's a coverage sack. And the redshirt freshman Eric Clare out of Elizabethtown, Pennsylvania, gets credit for the sack. Dawson and Briggs, wide receivers. Brooks and Bettis in the backfield. Pitch to Brooks. Brooks had a head of steam going, got back the yardage lost and then some before he's tackled by Willie Smith. Smith, a sophomore from Fort Pierce, Florida, getting in the lineup today in place of the regular Brett Wright, having a big game so far. Interesting call now for Lou Holtz, third down in about seven or eight. With these kind of weather conditions, you don't want to turn the football over. We'll see if he puts it in the air. Eric Mays brought in the play at a wide receiver spot. Brooks has carried five times, 18 yards. Myers pass intended for Mays, but too high and good coverage as well by Derek Bonna of Penn State. And Notre Dame will have to punt. The field conditions are getting much worse right now. I watched the wide receivers running their routes down the field. They were all very tentative. They were slipping, they were sliding, and what Penn State is doing, a nice move by Joe Paterno, they've gone to a man-to-man -man coverage now, and that is putting more pressure on those wide receivers to have to make some quicker moves. Hendrick will punt. And the always dangerous O.J. McDuffie, deep for Penn State. Sailing punt and a high one, good hang time for Hendrick, and all McDuffie can do is call for a fair catch. He makes it at about the 36-yard line. That was a 41-yard punt through the snow. Penn State still leads. Notre Dame football is brought to you by the heartbeat of America, Chevrolet, and your local Chevy dealer. By Sharp Electronics Corporation. From sharp minds come sharp products. By McDonald's. What you want is what you get. Guaranteed at McDonald's today. And by the Canon CJ10 Full Color Copier Printer Scanner. Now the power of color is yours. Back at Notre Dame Stadium, there's a guy that missed his fly south cue. Even the Ducks are wrapped up today. <laughs> Penn State holding a 6-3 lead. Just over 13 minutes left in the opening half. Nittany Lions with the football. Anderson. Not much. A couple of yards. Well, a slick field, Chris, they say favors the receivers because they know where they're going. The defensive backs don't. Do you buy that? Yeah, I do. And it also slows down the pass rush because they can't get quite the footing that you would ordinarily get. And it hurts the offensive team as far as the run blocking because once those offensive linemen begin to get engaged, they don't have the traction to push off like they once would. So, believe it or not, this may become a passing game. A lot of black shoes on the field today. Both these teams wearing basic black. In fact, basic uniforms, no frills, just tough football. Play action pass. Pressure. It was a screen set up, and Anderson can't hold it. I don't know if we can see this again or not, but I mean to tell you that they have that screen pass set up. That's the second time that Kerry Collins has missed a wide open receiver. Watch Richie Anderson just pop out. Take a look. Blockers in front and nobody on that entire third of the field for Notre Dame. A break for the Irish. 
Ryan Hamilton head up ahead of Steen, putting the pressure on Collins, who's hit only one of his first seven. Collins steps away from the rush and heaves it downfield. And OJ can't handle it. McDuffie broke inside, leaving the defender behind, and then could not hold on to the football. That's the kind of play that you expect O.J. McDuffie to make. He's working one-on-one -on, -one on Greg Lane. Greg Lane falls down. Nobody else left around, and McDuffie cannot believe that he blew that opportunity. Last year, he had 143 yards and three touchdowns versus Notre Dame. Joe Paterno told us McDuffie, the finest player he's been around in his 42 years as assistant or head coach at Penn State. Before the punt is away, the whistle like Notre blows. Notre Dame had to take a timeout. They had too many men on the field. It is the second Notre Dame timeout called here in the first half. Gives us a chance to get another college football update. Let's go back to New York and Jim Lampley. Jim? All right, Tom, let's take you to Raleigh, North Carolina, where North Carolina State's trying to nail down a Gator Bowl berth and second in the ACC. Damian Covington, after Duke had crept to within 21-14, picks it off and goes 28 yards for the touchdown. Fifth defensive touchdown of the year for NC State. They stretch the lead back to 28-14 over Duke. Back to you and Chris. All right, 6-3 here. Penn State with the lead, 12-10 left. Well, Florida State found out that ACC is a little tougher than some expected. Tough, but still uh, the Seminoles in a customary spot right in the top ten and headed for a New Year's Day Bowl. Penn State, they know where they're going as far as the bowl picture is concerned. Be headed for the Blockbuster Bowl, assured that with their sixth win. Notre Dame has assured themselves a spot on a New Year's Day Bowl, one of the major ones there, just a question of which one. One of the coalition bowls. Reese is punt. Will bounce and go out of bounds. Let's see, that is what, uh, about the 27 yard line? It's getting a little difficult to tell. Your guess is as good as mine. We'll be back. Get out the blankets and the mittens and the stocking caps, but nothing can keep the Irish faithful from coming to the final home game of the season. There's a new low in balloon head. Notre Dame, first down, pitch to Brooks. Couple blockers in front as he gets to the outside. Brooks with a stiff arm, knocked out of bounds at the 45-yard line. First down run of 17 yards. The mailman, neither rain nor sleet nor slow, shall slow down Reggie Brooks. He looks to be the most comfortable of everybody on the field as far as handling this turf. I don't know if he has some longer cleats in or exactly what the story is. Everyone else very tentative with their footing, but not Reggie Brooks. Reggie Brooks has the chance to set the all-time Notre Dame record for one season yards per carry set by the legendary George Giff back in 1920. 8.3 yards per carry, Giff's record 8.1. That won't help any as he's tripped up after a yard gain by Brian Gelheiser. This game will be reduced to Reggie Brooks and Jerome Bettis and Irv Smith. Irv Smith has played well. Uh, the short ball control type of passes are the ones that you look for now. May want to try and get Smith back involved in the game plan. Jerome Bettis back in the game as Brooks lines up on a wing. Bettis right behind Meyer. Gives to him. Broke one tackle and then taken down. Pretty play. Shelly Hammonds got in there to stop Brooks after he had evaded the first man. One great tradition that they have at Penn State is having the ability to tackle. That time Shelly Hammonds coming up out of the secondary and making the play. Always very good tacklers, very hard hitters in the secondary for Penn State. I can remember a few years back in the Fiesta Bowl, the job that they did against the Miami Hurricanes receivers. And of course, known far and wide for their great linebackers. Linebacker U. Meyer chased and dropped. Big loss on the play. Third sack of the day for the Nittany Lion defense. Eric Clare and Phil Yaboa Cody getting Meyer for a big loss, and Notre Dame will punt. Eric Clare.
Claire, number 89, and Rick Meyer may be hurt. Looks like he's limping off, possibly an ankle. But Eric Claire was a surprise starter today. Rich McKenzie has more sacks than any other player on this team, and he is on the bench, evidently, for this one as Eric Claire gets a chance to start. And Joe Paterno talked about uh, evaluating the personnel. Maybe that was one of the positions he decided to make a change. It's worked out so far. But Duffy slips and can't field Hendricks' punt. It'll roll inside the 20 down to the 17-yard line. 53 yards counting the roll. And Penn State backed up McDuffie and Meyer. 6-3, Nittany Lions. Notre Dame quarterback Rick Meyer wearing the jacket on the left was a bit gimpy as he left the field after that last series, but apparently is all right and ready to return to the game the next time Notre Dame has the ball. Penn State, the last two drives, three plays and a punt. Anderson tried to change direction, and that was his undoing. The defense collapsed on him at that point for a loss on the play. Let's go to Jim Lampley for another update from New York. And we take you to College Park, Maryland, where the Terrapins are trying to upset Clemson. Fumble Ruski play. Ball is left on the ground for fifth-year senior guard Ron Staffolino, and he has a lineman's dream. An 11-yard touchdown run. Maryland leads Clemson 27-12. Tigers in danger of being bowl ineligible if they lose. Two teams headed for bowls. Squaring off in the snow of South Bend. Anderson, can he get the corner? No. DuPose took him down right at the line of scrimmage. Demetrius DuBose, one of those seniors overcome by emotion at the pep rally last night. The tears flowing freely from the All-American linebacker. Very athletic, very agile. Seems to be doing a good job with his footing. Jumped outside where well, there's just no substitute for speed. The Miami Hurricanes have won so many national championships in the past decade based purely on speed. There's the season DuBose has had despite Sitting out the first two games under NCAA suspension. Scramble by Collins. He coughs up the football. And DuPose can't hold on. Still loose. Notre Dame's ball. the wall. Punt it back down the field. You've got a 6-3 lead. You see the mad scramble going on, but again, Kerry Collins with a huge mistake. And Brian Radigan, the man that eventually colored that elusive pigskin. First down, Notre Dame, from the 14 of the Nittany Lions. Brooks. Brooks has made a season of that spin move, but a little tough to do in these conditions. Derek Bonna made the stop for Penn State as Collins talks over that Fumble turnover. Yeah, and interesting now, Jeff Burris coming in the game. Looks like Notre Dame is going to go to the full house backfield just as if this were a third and short, third and goal situation. Try and get a little extra punch in the backfield. Images of old time Notre Dame football in the snow of the stadium. Full house T backfield. Bass, first carry of the day. Bonna again makes the tackle on big Jerome Bettis. John Dockery, how is Bettis? You know what? He's wearing his brace, as we talked about last week. He's tightly taped on that left ankle, which he hurt. And you know my feeling is the weather. He limped off after the last series. And I think the weather is so cold that it makes muscles feel tighter. He talked about it yesterday. And he didn't have a chance to get warmed up very much. He didn't play in the first quarter. So I think Jerome Bettis is a little bit tentative. And the cold weather has made him a little bit tighter. And the injury a little bit worse. And Reggie Brooks just came off limping a bit. Bettis, Lytle, and Burris in the backfield. Bettis to the line of scrimmage. Decision time now for Lou Holtz. Almost 
just have to go for it at that kind of an angle and with the goal push reduced the way they are, no reason to try and try for the field goal. Great short yardage team, remember, coming into the game, 16 for 18, third and two yards or less. Here it's a fourth down. Smith made a diving attempt, and Notre Dame does not convert on the fourth down attempt. They went for it all. They went for the touchdown to the tight end, Irv Smith, and the ball will go over to Penn State. A bold call by Lou Holtz on fourth down and one with the full house backfield. He got exactly what he wanted. Irv Smith simply not able to hold on to the football. And Chris, a key might have been the way they held up Smith at the line of scrimmage. He didn't get a clean break off the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and did you see Holtz there say, big guy, don't worry about it. You're going to get plenty more chances, and he will. In a game like this, the tight end is going to be instrumental. Now for Penn State, they averted the Notre Dame score, but they're backed up to their own five. Straight ahead with O'Neill. The good news for Penn State is they're in a, an area of the field, as you see Smith, he really uh, he wants to make the big plays in the passing game. He knows those pro scouts are watching, wants to try and prove it. But he's talking about Penn State. They get a break in that this is the same area, the same hash mark, if you will, that Notre Dame operated from. So there is a bit of a cleared off area from which to work. An overview of the field in these conditions. We're expecting as much as two inches of snow before we're finished. Anderson hit at the line of scrimmage. Center of the Notre Dame defense responding to the call, the handoff to Richie Anderson. Penn State is going to have to open it up a little bit on some early downs. They want to come out. One, two, run it on first and second down. Well, Notre Dame's defense has figured that out as well. This would be the third time in a row that they had not, or the fourth time in a row they don't pick up a first down if they don't get one here. Anderson has carried 10 times for only 21 yards. Again, up the middle with Anderson. Better game, but not enough for a first down, and Penn State will have to punt from their own territory. But, but that's not a problem. See, if you're Joe Paterno, you take a punt here based on what uh, what Kerry Collins did last time around. You don't want to risk putting the ball in his hands back in the pocket. Number 70 is Bob Say, who was a manager on this team, and now the long snapper for Penn State. And the punt will go out of bounds in Notre Dame territory about the 46 yard line. Notre Dame will take over there after a 39 yard punt. In the snow, 6-3, Nittany Lions. Richie Anderson getting some help digging the sod out of his helmet. Here on the off track, it has been a defensive struggle. Penn State four first downs, Notre Dame seven. Nittany Lions with the lead. Meyer on the option, pitch to Brooks. Penn State has it well defense, but the tackle not made, and Brooks does get back to the line of scrimmage, maybe gained a yard. Penn State obviously was ready for it, but the slippery field, unable to make the tackle. There's an idea of how muddy and slippery it's become. And that gets cold. You get that goo on your uniform, <laughs> and it is definitely cold, but nice run that time. You know, every once in a while, you'll see a great two-yard run as you see the goo on the back of the jerseys but that time Reggie Brooks was caught dead to right in the backfield by Rich McKenzie was able to get away and even pick up a couple of yards. Meyer dangerous pass Mays wrestling for it. who came up with it Mays was fighting with Gelheiser and Derek Mays comes up with the football. That was one remarkable play. Brian Gilheiser, watch him. He catches it. This is an interception. And then the freshman, Derek Mays, simply rips it away from him. 
from Indianapolis, Derek Mays. His parents have been to every game home and away since he was in the second grade. They're here today in the snow of Notre Dame Stadium. Pettis stepped through a tackle. Then wrestled down after he ripped off about five yards. Reggie Givens finally wrapped him up. You've got to think that Jerome Bettis likes these kind of conditions. He said that he used to play neighborhood football on a half asphalt, a half grass field. He said it was supposed to be tackle on the grass and touch on the asphalt, but sometimes that line got a little blurred like they are here today. This could be the final home game for Bettis, too. He's only a junior, but discussion that he might go hardship and join the NFL. Nice leap by Brooks to the outside. Knocked out of bounds. And he may have hurt his knee on the play. There's so many cameras, so much equipment down there, it's possible that when he came down that he may have landed on something. Well, I tell you, this is just a remarkable back. What just tremendous heart, tremendous courage, tremendous talent. Tries to get one more yard. Tough to see there. Brooks has carried now 11 times, 56 yards. Bettis, not much there. There's Brooks. With his right knee, they're examining. That really puts a tremendous burden on Jerome Bettis when he's out of the game. We've seen it several times this year. They've tried to hold Reggie Brooks out of a game as they see if there's any damage done to that knee. But Jerome Bettis not nearly as effective a back when Reggie Brooks is not in the ball game. Beckton is the tailback replacing Brooks. his way straight ahead. Gibbons finally got him down with help from Bonner. Is it like clockwork when I make a statement like that? <laughs> that the very next play, the guy will rip off one for about eight or nine? As I was saying, Jerome Bettis a much better back than when uh, Reggie Brooks is in there with him. <laughs> well, Brooks is back. Shook off what was apparently a banged up knee and is right back to assume the tailback spot. Two tight ends, Smith and McBride. Brooks fighting his way forward close to the first down. Looked like Penn State's defensive line jumped, but then got back. No flags down. I'm, I'm really surprised this is going to be close for the first down. It is a first down for Notre Dame as they move the chains. I was a little surprised that, especially on that third and, and three situation, they, they go with the hard snap count, they got him the jump, and generally in that situation, Tim Ruddy would have the automatic to snap the ball and to get the penalty. He didn't take it. Now just a minute 33 left in the half as Notre Dame tries to stick it in here. Eighth play of the drive for the Irish. Was bouncing off him. He's down close, I think, to the five yard line. The yard marker is obscured by the snow. Givens made the tackle. This is fullback weather. Jerome Bettis right up the middle. No cuts necessary. Good blocking by Aaron Taylor. He's a Lombardi Award finalist. Brooks ran over his own man Bettis, who was stacked up at the line of scrimmage trying to block. And Notre Dame will use the timeout here. Their final timeout. Remember, the Irish had to take two defensive timeouts after mix-ups earlier in the half, so that was their third and final with 48 seconds left. Yeah, you know, you've got a decision if you're Lou Holtz here. Uh, you've got the ball in the middle of the field. Given the horrible conditions on the field, you want to give Craig Hentrick his best chance to make a field goal if necessary, but at the same time, you don't want to limit your offense. Uh, remember, the goalposts are in close now. They're the same distance uh, as they use in the National Football League. They used to be much wider in college football. So uh, do you 
run a dive or something up the middle and try and maintain that middle of the field position or you just give it your best shot third and uh, it says four but it looks a lot longer than that it looks like about <laughs> six or seven a very <laughs> long <laughs> four. <laughs> it's hard to tell <laughs> under these conditions. And Joe Paterno did have his team ready to play and obviously helped by the inclement conditions holding off that high powered effectiveness of the Notre Dame offense which leads college football in total yards and averages 41 points a game. Third down. from one man and then the pursuit gets him and that's the fourth time they've taken Meyer down today and now no choice they will kick for the tie. Kyoka Jackson making a tremendous play. No timeouts left so they have to get on the field snap the ball they have plenty of time 23 seconds but again because Rick Meyer scrambled they have the tough angle. 32 yard Hendrick field goal attempt. And it's good. Craig Hendrick from 32 yards, despite the slippery field, boots it through the uprights, and we're tied at six apiece. Good job by Craig Hendrick to maintain his concentration. His footing held true. He stuck it in the left upright. That's a big moment for Notre Dame. They did not want to go in down at halftime because you don't know what these conditions are going to be in the second half. Joe Paterno's Nittany Lions missing or not missing but having their extra point blocked. And so it's 6-6 with nine seconds left in the opening half. There's Hendrick, the all-time leading Notre Dame kicker. Second overall scoring to Alan Pinkett in Notre Dame football history. That was his second field goal of the day and his eighth of the season. But that was a nice drive by Notre Dame under these conditions that should give them a confidence boost going into the second half that yes they can move the football despite the snow. Stay with us at halftime. Jim Lampley will update you on all the scores and highlights of this day in college football. We'll get a break from the snow and stay with us at the half back in the warm studios of New York City. Jim Lampley with the scores and highlights. And the flip side of that is that Penn State goes in with very little momentum. Uh, only seven yards and zero first downs in the second quarter of this game. Hendrick will just squib kick it. Finally comes to McDuffie anyway. And McDuffie will be wrestled down. Two seconds showing on the clock. Take the ball, fall on it, go in at halftime. Nothing wrong with being 6-6 at the half for Penn State. They came in a heavy underdog. Defensively, they've done a very nice job offensively. If they can just stay away from the big mistakes and hope that eventually their defense comes up with a turnover and gives them some good field position. So it's the final play of the half coming up, barring a defensive penalty. And as you advised, Collins just downs it. So the offensive fireworks held in check by the inclement weather at Notre Dame Stadium. And the first half will end in a 6-6 tie. Penn State scoring a touchdown, extra point blocked, two field goals Notre Dame. Let's go to John Dockery. Just, yeah, Coach, uh, a bold call on fourth and one there. Did weather have anything to do with it? No, not at all. We thought we had the guy open. We did have him open. Just that we thought our defense would stop him. We'd get the ball back. We'd have a chance to kick a field goal the next play, which we did. The condition of Bettis, is he all right? Well, he, he's not 100%, but it's the condition of the field that bothers me the most. Thank you, Coach. So Notre Dame getting a 32 yard field goal from Craig Hendrick in the final seconds of the first half to tie the game 6 6 in a snowstorm at South Bend. That's the halftime score, all even at six. Let's go to Jim Lampley. 6 6 at halftime. Meyer. Yes! Brooks! Six 
six at halftime. Penn State and Notre Dame. And John Dockery is right now with Coach Joe Paterno of the Nittany Lions. Coach. Coach. Joe. You got a second? Just wanted to, what did you say to the team at halftime? Well, we're playing hard. We're going to play a little better in the second half. Hang on the ball. Make it. We didn't throw the ball, you know, consistently enough against the club that's playing as well as that. We got to throw a little better in the second half. Uh, just a little bit more effort, I think we'll be okay. How do the weather, weather conditions affect you? Uh, there's a lot of slipping. I guess it affects both sides. They do a little better job at the running game than we are with the, with the footing, but uh, we'll be all right. Thanks, Coach. Okay. All right, the dock always comes through as Penn State onto the field. The snow has let up a little bit. They've had the Zambonis or something out to clear off some of the hard markers. The and it's, it's a little better on the field, although it's probably still slippery. Well, the weather outside is frightful. The booth is so delightful. Uh, the weather conditions, obviously, the most important factor in that first half. Uh, Notre Dame did have a big play, though, on fourth and one as they went for it close to the Penn State goal line. They had to turn the ball over, not converting. Yeah, a bit of a surprise. Lou Holtz with the great power football game that he did. He had the full house backfield in and uh, had a chance to complete it to Irv Smith. They go with the play action pass. And look at the play here. They really have Penn State outflanked. They've got people outside here. They're going to run the play action this way. Rick Meyer and then Irv Smith is going to try and sneak to the back of the end zone and, uh, and make a play. Everything works perfectly. They get the good play action. Rick Meyer does a nice job of scrambling. Now it's just up to Irv Smith to make a big play and couldn't get it done. You'll see in the replay that he had every single opportunity to make the catch. He had a little bit of trouble, a little bit too much traffic to get through, but there's a play that you would expect Irv Smith to make. Well, so the weather did play a big factor in that uh, game. I couldn't even tell if you were drawing or that was snow on the field on the <laughs> Telestrator. But let's take a look at the uh, first half statistics and the weather obviously holding down the offensive production of both teams. Only four first downs for Penn State, 39 rushing yards, 89 for the Irish. And total yards, 164 Notre Dame, only 85 for Penn State. Turnovers, two apiece, and obviously turnovers could play a big factor in who wins this game. Well, the biggest thing for Penn State is they simply cannot put themselves in a position to give up the cheap score to Notre Dame. So they'll have to do a much better job of hanging on to the football than they did the first half. How do you adjust your game plan now, knowing the conditions for the second half? Well, you just have to be patient out there on the field and, and understand that there's nothing wrong with a punt. You know, take the ball, do the best job that you can and then punt it away and hope that you're the first one to get a break because the next one on the board more than likely will win this football game. Penn State deferred their decision after winning the opening coin toss and they will have the ball first to open the second half as the Irish gather in the tunnel opposite the end zone here at Notre Dame Stadium. And again we point out the final home appearance for 20 scholarship seniors on this Notre Dame team. And as you can see, the snow has let up somewhat. The field uh, at least is not as snowy as it was. It's still going to be pretty wet and still going to be pretty slippery, huh? Yeah, and, uh, but really Penn State's or Notre Dame's defense has been the story. In the second quarter, they really took over on the last five drives that, uh, that uh, Penn State has had. They have not had a single first down. And to the cheers of the sellout crowd, the Irish back onto the field. Rick Meyer, the Notre Dame quarterback, shaken up a time or two. He's already been sacked four times. And there's Meyer loosening up. Six of ten on the day for 75 yards. He had one picked off. And he's doing a good job. Seems to be handling the football fine. Uh, they were successful going to Irv Smith early. Of course, Irv had a chance to make the great play in the end zone. But uh, the short ball control type of passes. Don't forget Jerome Bettis, a great receiver coming out of the backfield, averaging almost 17 yards a catch. They may try to work it to him some in the second half. Kerry Collins, Myers Penn State counterpart, has not had a good day. Only one of eight, although that one, 46 yards to Thomas, set up the Penn State to touchdown. There's thunder and lightning. Bettis and Brooks back on the field a little tardily. Getting some extra treatment, no doubt, for the dings and bruises they've had both coming into the game and during the first half. But the good news for Notre Dame fans is they both appear to be okay as they jog out of the tunnel. Hendrick will kick off for Notre Dame. Short kick and fumble. 
back to the 30 yard line where Penn State will take over after McDuffie went back to get the football and takes it to the 30. Let's go to John Dockery. You know, Tom, the, uh, there hasn't been any dramatic equipment changes down here. Sometimes you think that players will change to longer cleats, but really they haven't. They're just using more of the equipment kind of thing like this to uh, wipe off their cleats. You see a lot of the players doing that to get the mud out of it. And the weather conditions, as you can see, are slightly better. So no big equipment changes here at the half. Back to you, Tom. All right, John. Opening possession of the second half. Anderson. You saw when he tried to cut upfield after getting to the outside, it, the footing just wasn't there. He sort of slid around, couldn't make a sharp cut, and the defense catches up to him. Penn State has really tried to run into the boundary today, to the short side of the field. Of course, in the professional game, the hash marks are much closer to the center of the field, but in college, there's a short side and a wide side. And given the conditions of the field and how slippery it is, it seems like Joe Paterno would want to come to the wide side a little more often to give his back some maneuverability. Collins throws it wide open underneath to O'Neill. And O'Neill gets about 10 or 11 yards before Demetrius DuBose takes him down. Brian O'Neill is a good story. He's uh, Mike Mathis, an NBA referee, is his father. He uh, was adopted by a white family. Mike Mathis, uh, of course, his father, and, and uh, just awfully proud of that young man, Brian O'Neill. Former Cincinnati High School Athlete of the Year from Purcell High School. They announced the score here, and the place went crazy. I didn't hear which score it was. Probably Illinois leading Michigan. Would be a safe guess. <laughs> Should have known. Illinois, I think, is uh, on top. 22-19 is the report we get. But a key moment for Penn State's offense to come right out and pick up a first down after they had struggled so much in the second quarter. Anderson, no gain on that first down play. The late handoff to Anderson. Again, plowing straight ahead for only a yard. Anthony Peterson latched on to him early with Jim Flanagan there, too. Peterson is from Pennsylvania, from Monongahela. We asked him if Penn State recruited him, and he said yes, but he really wasn't interested. In fact, his mom didn't like them, so he never even visited. He is from Pennsylvania, but he went to the same high school as Joe Montana, so... He has Notre Dame ties right from the outset. He said in that high school they've got plaques and trophies and memorabilia and everything you can think of related to Joe Montana. Notre Dame with their nickel defense in. Here's the flex tight end. Brayton flexes wide right in the slot. Collins threw it as he was going down and it was swiped away by Devon McDonald. Devon McDonald has been putting pressure on the quarterback all season long. Leads this team in quarterback sacks. You see, he goes with the inside move and gets all over Kerry Collins. Once again, give Devon McDonald credit. 11 tackles for losses so far on the season for McDonald. And Peterson, not known for his pass coverage, made a good play on the underneath coverage. Penn State's first possession of the half results in a punt taken by Miller on a fair catch at about the 16-yard line. 41-yard Penn State punts. Notre Dame's first possession of the half coming up when we return. Notre Dame football is brought to you by Oldsmobile, the power of intelligent engineering, by Pitney Bowes Copier Systems, by the 25th Anniversary Diamond, a brilliant celebration of the loving marriage, and by O'Doul's from the makers of Budweiser. Refreshing beer taste without the alcohol. Only a few flakes of snow falling now, but some residue on the field, as you can see. Notre Dame with a ball and a first down and a 6-6 tie. Brooks. First free for a moment, carrying tacklers for two or three yards. Let's go to John Dockery. You know, Tom, we look at the linebackers on uh, Penn State, and Joe Paterno was saying that Reggie Gibbons is as good as any linebacker he's ever had. And that's a shocking statement when you can think of some of the guys that he's had, the Jack Hams, the Dennis Anconses, the Greg Buttles, and the Shane Conlins. And he's kind of hybrid, number 58 is, because he's half defensive back, half linebacker. I'll pick it up after this. Uh, this is a Brooks run as he slides. If they get in the slide, 
and land another yard or so on to it, just short of the 20. Doc? Yeah, Tom, you know, it's just, uh, it's funny because everybody that ever goes to Penn State is obviously considered for the linebacker position because of Joe's fondness, fondness for that, and he considers the linebacker spot to be the one that's most critical. Remember when they were talking about uh, Jerome Bettis and he was considering Penn State and they mentioned the word linebacker? It was over. That was it. He didn't even consider it after that. <laughs> uh -uh. All he had was the uh, promise from Holtz that he'd be able to take his shoes, and that cinched it for Notre Dame. Meyer made a little move, knocked out of bounds, but short of the first down. Rick Meyer just could not find anyone open. There you see Reggie Givens, and Joe Paterno has compared Reggie Givens to Jack Ham. Now that is one heck of a comparison. The great Hall of Fame linebacker of the Pittsburgh Steelers. There you see him making the play. And uh, Notre Dame will have to punt. Mitchell Bettis uh, taping his shoes. That was one of his conditions for coming to Notre Dame. And Coach Holtz normally wouldn't allow that. Do you notice how many Notre Dame players are allowed to tape their shoes these days? Quite a few. Bettis said he didn't mind losing his distinction. Try to draw him off sides. Sailing kick, McDuffie with a fair catch at the 43-yard line. Only 33 yards off the foot of Hendrick that time. So both teams punt on their first possession of the second half. And we're still deadlocked at six apiece with 11.08 now remaining in the third quarter from Notre Dame Stadium. Welcome back to Notre Dame. You see that score at Michigan at Ann Arbor. The Wolverines trailing Illinois 22-19. Less than a minute remaining now, but Michigan has the ball inside the Illinois 20. We'll let you know where the game is a final. Collins going deep, but overshooting his intended receiver, Grieb, who was wide open across the middle. That's the third time today that uh, Collins has missed wide open wide receivers with a chance to make a big play. And you know, Perhaps uh, now Collins two for 11, only 56 yards. Had his man wide open down the field again, and everything has been long. They haven't been short. Everything has been long for Kerry Collins, and he knows it. Draw play, Anderson. No, excuse me, O'Neal. And O'Neal, three yards, tackled by Brian Young. The team perhaps most excited about that Michigan score, though, is Texas A&M, because that would move them ahead of Michigan in the polls to the number three spot so that if Alabama should lose in the SEC championship game or perhaps even tonight in Starkville, uh, Mississippi, against Mississippi State, that would give them a chance to force Miami to come to the Cotton Bowl. Collins under pressure. Intercepted by Burris. Brian Radigan was bearing down on Kerry Collins. He had to let it fly. Intended for Troy Drayton, who's been blank today. And Penn State will have to punt. Radigan getting the pressure, and Jeff Burris almost making the interception. Again, not a fir no first downs on that drive for Penn State, but they're winning the battle of field position here. They have the ball in the 46. If they can get another good punt, back up Notre Dame, force them to go the distance, make them go 80, 85 yards to beat you. There's the fifth part of the day, bouncing and down at the 25-yard line where Notre Dame will take over. 29-yard punt only that time. And how's the field holding up? It stops snowing for the moment. John Hockery. You know, Tom, it's a lot kinder and gentler down here. You can see even some of the snow is beginning to melt. And moments ago, the sun came out. So the wind has died down. Conditions are far better than they were. And that certainly would help Notre Dame. Back it's, to you, Tom. It's a little soggy, though, Doc. Is it, is it still slippery, even though the snow is melting a bit? It is soggy, and there's a little bit of spots along the way. It's mushy. And there's a little bit of mud underneath the grass, but conditions are a lot better, especially in terms of wind. Brooks spins for a couple. This field has a tendency to get slick anyway as Chris Caesar makes the stop for Penn State. Brooks now has toted the ball 16 times and gained 64 yards. Notre Dame staying with the running game on first down. 
They want to try and reestablish it. Reggie Brooks, Jerome Bettis. Maybe they'll come back with the play action pass here on second and nine. Inside the 10 minute mark in the third quarter, still tied, no scoring in the second half. And State, remember, has beaten Notre Dame two straight times. Audible by Byron. Quick pass to Griggs, and it's ruled incomplete. Griggs thought he caught it. It was only a gain of two yards anyway. That's not really worth the argument. Well, the official that made the call on the sideline had no way of seeing this. Uh, he was completely blocked by Griggs, and that was an incomplete pass. Nice call by the officials. Might have had a better look at it than you thought. Well, that could be. <laughs> Myers only hit one of his last five passes. For the day, he's 6 of 11 for 75 yards. Greg Gregg says that his strength is blocking. He says if I spring Reggie Brooks on a long run, that's every bit as important as Reggie Brooks himself. He's in the slot now left. Meyer floats it to Dawson. Wrestled back. If he gets his forward progress, he's going to be about a half yard short of the first down, I think. Shelly Hammonds threw him back. Let's see where they spot it. No, it will be enough for a first down, a pretty generous spot there. That's a nice play by Lake Dawson. Finding a hole in the zone defense. He stayed on the move. Rick Meyer finally found him, and he leaned back up the field with the ball. A very generous spot. <laughs> yes. Bettis, Michigan, we understand, and Ann Arbor is attempting a field goal which would tie Illinois, and it's good. So Illinois and Michigan tied 22-22. That would be the second tie of the year for Michigan. Their first game of the season, of course, was a tie here at Notre Dame. Five, uh, 19 seconds left, 22-22. As you pointed out, that likely is going to put Michigan behind Texas A&M in the polls. The Aggies unbeaten. Bettis across midfield, nine yards and a Notre Dame first down with Reggie Gibbons hanging on for dear life. Watch Gibbons come from his linebacker position, number 58, to make the play. He's just out in the middle of the field. As John told you earlier, he's sort of a part backer, part defensive back. It's the same position that Shane Conlon played when he was here at Penn State. Bettis has carried eight times, 38 yards. He's replaced by Dean Lytle. Brooks can't spin away that time. Wrapped up, and the man that hit him first was once again Reggie Gibbons. Gibbons, a former Virginia Prep High School Defensive Player of the Year, All-American. Tom, they had a crackback block on there. Ray Griggs was supposed to crack back on Reggie Gibbons, and yet Brooks didn't take it far enough outside. He misread the play. Defensive player of the Fiesta Bowl win over Tennessee last year. Maybe he had a fumble recovery return for a touchdown in that game. He also was a triple jumper in high school. Meyer short hopped by Gerald. That looked like a busted play from the outside uh, from the outset, and it goes incomplete. Lou Ben Fatty, their Penn State's most consistent. Defensive players, you see Rick try and shake a few snowballs out of that helmet. But Ben Fatty has uh, definitely been their most consistent player, very smart, never out of position. He's an All American candidate, candidate. Had an interception as a defensive lineman last year against Rick Meyer, the first of his career. Third and long for the Irish. Wide open, Dawson. Notre Dame's number one receiver for 30 yards. Joe Paterno says that his teams prefer to play a zone defense. That time they were burned by the zone. They just don't feel comfortable in the man-to-man, -man. and it's not because of the passing game. It's because of the option in the running game of Notre Dame. 
First down play from the 22. Option. Meyer cuts up. Two or three yards before he's tackled. Let's go to Jim Lampley now in New York City for a college football update. All right, Tom Hammond, and let's take a look at the whimper, not the bang, that concluded Michigan-Illinois. The Wolverines played for a tie, draw play on third and 15, then the Elizovic field goal, longest of his career, that tied the game at 22 apiece, nailed down Michigan's Big Ten title and Rose Bowl berth, but in all probability knocks the Wolves out of the national championship picture. Back to Tom. All right, Jim, here's uh, Reggie Brooks. Corralled, surrounded, and taken down hard by Givens. Givens has really turned it on here in the third quarter. Well, we're beginning to see now why Joe Paterno thinks so highly of this young man. That was Todd Norman who came out through a good block right at his knees. And uh, Reggie Givens showed what a great athlete he is. Just simply shielded that off and made the play. Looking for double figures and tackles here in the game and still in the third quarter. Meyer hands it straight ahead to Bettis, and Bettis is hit at the line of scrimmage, wrestled down at the 20-yard line. Ben Fatty, Givens, everybody uh, for Penn State ready for the handoff on third and long to Jerome Bettis. That was a good, strong tackle that time by Ben Fatty. He got his hands on the football, and that is the easiest way to bring down a back like Bettis because they're always so concerned about a fumble, especially when you're here in the scoring zone anyway. Hendrick, 37-yard field goal attempt to give Notre Dame the lead. And it's good. Hendrick with three field goals. Notre Dame, 9-6. Craig Hendricks' third field goal gives Notre Dame a 9-6 lead. The Irish with a big edge in total yards, but only three points on the scoreboard. McDuffie takes the kick. Had a little seam to the outside for a moment, taken out of bounds at the 35-yard line by Rick Lozano. Some of the other scores, including that big upset, Illinois at Ann Arbor, knocking uh, Michigan, perhaps, down in the rankings with a 22-22 tie. And here's the story right now. Kerry Collins comes back in the game. They're down 9-6, still very much in this football game. You can't afford to have Kerry Collins make a big mistake now. Penn State's longest play was their first yard from scrimmage, a 12-yard reverse to O.J. McDuffie. That's the longest running play. They had a 46-yard pass. Anderson, only two yards. Bursich and DuBose making the hit. And they haven't been able to get the ball back in the hands of O.J. McDuffie really since that first play. Uh, Kerry Collins not having a great deal of success throwing the football. He's had it a couple of different times on punt returns, kickoff returns. But when you've got a star player like O.J. McDuffie, you have to find a way to get him the ball. Maybe a flanker screen, something like that. And held without a catch today. Again, too high on his pass. Consistently too high and too long all afternoon. Anderson was the intended receiver there. He's only 2 of 13 is Gary Collins. They've had so many different quarterbacks playing the position this year. Tony Saka had been the quarterback here for 35 straight games, graduated this last year. John Saka's brother took over, started in the opener against Cincinnati. He got hurt. Wally Richardson came in, played some. But they really thought that Kerry Collins, before he broke his finger, was going to be the starter. He threw for 400 yards in the spring game last year. And here he just heaves it as far as he can, hoping someone can get under it. And it's a Notre Dame man, but he's out of bounds. Tom Carter came down with the football. But he was out of bounds, so no interception, but Penn State will have to punt. Tom Carter in absolutely perfect position to make the play again. Teams almost now are avoiding throwing to his side. In the past three or four weeks, he has been almost unbeatable. Drees to punt again with Miller D off the side of his foot. Low punt. Does get a Penn State bounce. And will roll dead. 
Inside the 30 down to about the 27 yard line. 35 yards on a fortuitous roll for the Nittany Lions who trail by three. Penn State quarterback Kerry Collins, who was taken in the baseball draft by the Detroit Tigers in 1990, doesn't have his fastball today. He's had a tough time throwing the football. And ironic, the 11 in Pennsylvania native from a state that has produced so many great quarterbacks, struggling today. Here's Meyer. Lost it for Dawson downfield. Diving catch, it came loose. What a great effort by Lake Dawson. Really like the way that Lake Dawson plays the game of football. Surprise that time by Lou Holt. So far, Notre Dame has run the ball 90% of the time today, 18 of 20 on first town. That time they come out with a play action off of the option action and almost hit a big one to Lake Dawson. Almost 48 yards. Was that a beautiful almost fingertip catch? Reminds me of a former pro player that was a great receiver. Steve Largent. Brooks. Is it time for me to put that running joke to bed? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you won't, so I don't know why I'm going to say anything. <laughs> Third down, 10. You know, one of the disadvantages, you try and hit the big play on first down. Now you're putting a lot of pressure on your offense. Blue Holtz now with the third 10 situation. I'd like to see him go to the straight drop back here. When we've seen Rick Meyer in straight drop back situations, he's been very effective. Maybe Irv Smith right over the ball. Brooks held in check by the Penn State defense and the field conditions today. Meyer fired a bullet. Incomplete intended for Becton. Well, it has become indeed a defensive struggle. Notre Dame has not scored a touchdown. Givens and the Penn State defense have held them out of the end zone. They do have three field goals. That was a poor play by the freshman that time, Derek Mays. He was supposed to run a hook on down the field and clear it out for Lee Becton, but he cut his route off a little bit short, and they ended up with two men in the exact same spot. Really nowhere for Rick Meyer to throw the ball. Hendrick will punt to McDuffie. Went straight up in the air. And bounces backwards. It'll be down at about the 43-yard line. Craig Hendrick hoping to ply his trade in the NFL next season as either a punter or a place kicker. And gives us a chance to remind you that we'll have plenty of NFL action for you tomorrow here on NBC. It all starts at 12.30 Eastern time with NFL Live. Then the Houston Oilers started off the season very well, but on... Hard times lately. They've lost three of their last four games. Warren Moon knocked cold by the Steelers, pulled early against the Browns. And they'll have a tough time tomorrow as they take on the Minnesota Vikings. Will Moon and Jack Pardee be able to turn things around soon? O.J. Simpson will have that story on NFL Live at 12.30 tomorrow. Collins looked like he threw it as far as he could. McDuffie can't hang on. Twisting, turning, fingertip catch, no. Well, that's the second one that McDuffie's had his hands on and had a chance to make a big play. He got behind Tom Carter that time, and for some reason, he tried to flip all the way around. You're, it's such a tough catch when you have to turn your head all the way around and try and find the ball. Once again, probably would have been better to try and go into some kind of a back pedal and just fall backwards and try and come up with the play. They're trying to get it to O.J. McDuffie, but and he's had his chances, but it's failed on two long plays. He's the man in a game like this that you need to make a big play, isn't he? And he made uh, three of them last year for Penn State at three touchdowns versus the Irish. See if he goes to him again. Yes, and this time he makes the catch. And McDuffie fights his way to the Irish 30-yard line. Penn State first down on a 27-yard game. Such a good call by Joe Paterno. You get behind Tom Carter on the last play, so what do you do here? Make it look like it's going to be a deep pass, then have McDuffie break it off underneath. Just put the football in his hands and give him a chance to do something with it. First reception of the day for O.J. McDuffie. Joe Paterno said the best player he's been around in 42 years at State College, Pennsylvania. Delayed handoff, nothing. Demetrius DeBose stopping Mike Archie. Behind the line, Devon McDonald came in to put the clincher on. 
Watch Devon McDonald, number 45, and Demetrius DeBose play this counter tray absolutely perfectly. McDonald took the inside route and really broke up the pulling offensive lineman, which allowed Demetrius DeBose to come in behind it and make the play. Boy, this kind of game you like. Look at the mud on the helmets. The uniforms are dirty. Snow, mud, cold temperatures. Penn State fighting to at least tie, perhaps go ahead. Collins bottled the ball as he sets up the screen, and DeBose comes from nowhere to knock it away from O'Neill. Now, <laughs> Demetrius DeBose got there about three or four seconds before the ball did, and he's going to get no call on it. Watch DeBose. You see him, number 31. He'll arrive well yep. before the ball got there. That should have been an interference call. But remember, earlier in the game, they had a chance. They set up the screen. It was wide open, but Demetrius DeBose had it grabbed that time. They need about 10 to have a legitimate shot in the field goal. They're 0 of 8 on third and long, and only a couple of third down conversions all day. Collins buying time with the roll. Time runs out, and he throws it up for grabs. Knocked down. Double coverage. Burris was there with Carter. Thomas was the intended receiver in the end zone. A real break that time for Kerry Collins. He just threw that one up in the air and hoped. Should you have tried for a shorter pass and perhaps a tying field goal? Well, you're looking at a, at a third down and 12. In all likelihood, you're not going to pick up the first down. If you get five or six yards, you at least give your field goal kicker a chance to uh, tie the score. But by just throwing the ball up in the air, and there's really no need to punt here. I like the call by Joe Paterno. Why not? A punt only gains you 10, 11 yards. See if you can get your team back in the game. Fourth and 12. Archie on the draw. Doesn't fool anybody. Got three yards. And the ball will go over to Notre Dame. Let me rephrase that. <laughs> I like the decision. I didn't like the call. I guess when you've got a back, well, that wasn't even Richie Anderson. That's that Mike Archie. Archie. And uh, Demetrius DeBose has been studying some film. So Notre Dame will take over on its own 30 yard line. Irish up 9 6, 155 left in the third. Brooks. Reggie Brooks got nine yards. Gelheiser finally tackling Brooks, who almost broke it. Another big one. As we said, he's held in check for most of the game, but a candidate to break one at any time. You just get the feeling that this game is beginning to shift towards Notre Dame. Absolutely overpowered Reggie Gibbons, the fine linebacker from Penn State. Brooks can't spin away from the Penn State defense, the center of the defense, and Tayoka Jackson converging on Brooks as we come in the final minute, inside the final minute of the third quarter. Joe Paterno glancing at the clock. He's still okay. He feels good about this game. It's 9 6 as they're heading for the fourth quarter now. That's what he wanted. He wanted a close ball game to have a chance to win it in the fourth quarter. He has that now, but his defense has to make a stand. Trips to the right. Bettis. Good defense by Penn State. Bettis only got a yard as they came with a spread formation, gave it to Bettis, and Penn State was not fooled. Phil Yaboa Cody gets credit for the Penn State tackle, and that 
was the final play of the third quarter. So that's the end of the third quarter here at Notre Dame Stadium. Notre Dame leading Penn State 9-6, and we'll be back after these messages from your local station. Ready to start the fourth quarter in a matchup between two ranked teams, two legendary coaches, Joe Paterno of Penn State. Already made some gutsy calls. Both these coaches today, Lou Holtz going for it on fourth and one, throwing the pass. Joe Paterno on the other side going for it on fourth and 12. Look up, Ray! Meyer looks to the end zone for Dawson. Can't get it. Dawson might have hurt himself as he banged against the bleachers there in the corner of the end zone, but he's all right. I thought that was a good decision by Rick Meyer. Lake Dawson trying to run a post corner. Uh, Derek Bonna just did not bite on it, had good position. Rick just took it and threw it out of bounds. So fourth down, Notre Dame. This is a similar situation that we saw Penn State in their last possession when Coach Paterno, as you said, the two coaching legends making some fourth down decisions. Not to, not to pooch punt, but to go for it with a draw play. Similar in the fact that uh, same part of the field, but Lou Holtz is up 9 6. Nope. Hey, Hendrick throws. Broken up. Intended for Irv Smith. Hendrick's pass knocked down, and the Penn State defense was not fooled. Interesting call by Lou Holtz. I guess basically the same thought process that Joe Paterno had on the other side of the field. Why try and punt the ball when you get it on the 35? And I think Lou Holtz wanted a pass interference on that play. Didn't see pass interference. Isn't it interesting, uh, even under these conditions, these two master coaches putting their imprint on the game with some of those decisions? Nobody's hit the big jackpot yet with one. Richie Anderson on that carry for the Nittany Lions. Oliver Gibson made the tackle for Notre Dame. Well, that's a momentum lift, really, for Penn State. And rather than having the ball backed up on their four, five, six yard line, if uh, Hendrick hits the good punt. And you know what may have been a tip off right there was the fact that Rick Meyer wasn't in to do the pooch punting. He is generally the guy that comes in. I don't know why they wouldn't have used Rick Meyer to throw that pass if you wanted to fake. Wonder if Penn State picked that up. First down run by Richie Anderson. Indeed, it does look like Penn State has gotten a lift from holding Notre Dame on the fake. Well, when you're the underdog, this is all you can ask for. You're down 9-6. Get the ball out around midfield. Now, because of the fake punt, you are in a better position as far as the field is concerned. They pick up a first down, give your defense a little bit of time to rest. You don't really expect this Penn State offense to take it all the way down the field, but every first down certainly helps in the battle of field position. It's only the seventh first down of the game for Penn State. Anderson got three yards. Well, Penn State has been very strong in the fourth quarter. And beginning the fourth quarter with that defensive stop of the fake. And perhaps that will generate some enthusiasm for their offense, which has sputtered lately. Need to get O.J. McDuffie back in the game now. He's your star. He's your game breaker. If you have some kind of a quick way to flip him the ball. There he comes out here. He's got the one-on-one -on -one matchup with Tom Carter. And they're looking for him. Duffy and incomplete. I believe it was tipped by Demetrius DeBose. The play was there. It was the same hook that they had run earlier and gotten the ball to O.J. McDuffie. That time Demetrius DeBose able to sprint out across the field and get a hand on it, I believe. There it is. Just at the last second, DeBose with that underneath coverage able to deflect the pass. Again, there's nothing like having speed on defense. That's what made the play. DeBose has acquitted himself well in his final home appearance. His mom, who's his biggest critic, will like that. And figures that. Collins. Underneath to his tight end, and that's great. His first catch of the day. And he'll have a first down on that. What a break for Penn.
Penn State. When Drayton was being dragged to the field, he landed on top of the man that was trying to tackle him, and that propelled him forward for the first down. What an odd play. Watch the end of it. Watch as DeBose makes the tackle. Now he's going to bring him down, and Drayton will land right on top of him. His knee didn't touch the ground, and it gave him the extra two or three yards for the first down. Drayton has been a key weapon, the second leading receiver for the Nittany Lions, and that's the first time he's coming to play this afternoon. Here's McDuffie taken out of bounds. That's about a five-yard gain. And, Tom, what I think is happening is the field is beginning to clear up. Some of the snow is beginning to melt. Uh, the sun is out now, and the offenses are beginning to find their footing. You can see the big patch right in the middle of the field where the ball is beginning to move up and down. Still some problems in the red zone where the snow still is, but as far as the middle of the field, there's room to operate now. But Duffy was calling for a towel on the sidelines to get the mud off his gloves. Drop by Anderson. And Anderson will be a yard short of a first down, tackled by Jeff Burris. You would think that this is four down territory for Penn State, that they've got a third down now and about a yard and a half. I'm sure Joe Paterno has a fourth down call ready. We've got uh, 12 and a half minutes now to go in this ball game. But with some of the problems that Penn State has had moving the football, when you get an effective drive like this going, I would think Joe Paterno would take two cracks. Eighth play for Penn State is third and two. He has a first down inside the Notre Dame 30. Ryan O'Neill. Suddenly, the Penn State offense has the running game going, an occasional pass by Collins, and they've moved inside the Notre Dame 30. That's a nice call by Joe Paterno. They line up in that formation where Richie Anderson has been diving over the top. And rather than giving the ball to Anderson, they turn around and give it on a quick trap to Brian O'Neill. Surprise Notre Dame's defense. Take the pitch. Collins on the roll. He's got the corner. Collins running out of bounds. He got eight yards before Jeff Burris knocked him to the sideline. That was really a nice play by Ryan Greeb. Demetrius DeBose had man-to-man -man coverage on Greeb. And watch him just kind of turn around and get in the way of DeBose. That allowed Collins to turn the corner. Turnos Nittany Lions moving the football with new life here in the fourth quarter. It all started with a hold of Notre Dame on a fake fourth down punt. Pitch to Anderson. First down. Anderson is to the 15 yard line, wrapped up by the Bows. Now you've got a first down and 15. First down and 10 on the 15 yard line. Now is when you begin to match wits. Joe Paterno making the calls himself, going against Rick Minner and Lou Holtz. Rick Minner, the defensive coordinator. Rick Minner told me he wanted moments like this in the ball game where the offense, for whatever reason, has problems and his defense has a chance to win one. Collins in trouble. Sacked by Oliver Gibson. Again, the inexperience of Kerry Collins. You've got the ball at the 15-yard line. You're in perfect position to at least tie the ball game. Don't give up the sack. If it's not there initially, if the blocking is breaking down, just throw it away. That's Rick Ritter with the headphones on. Defensive coordinator for the Irish. Now it's second and 20. Duffy hammered by DuBose, and the pass sails incomplete. Looks like they're playing an in-and-out type of coverage on O.J. McDuffie right now. They had deep help. Greg Lane was behind him, and Demetrius DuBose looked like he was uh, in charge of anything coming back underneath on the field. Barry hey, Collins that time picking out O.J. McDuffie and not being willing to go away from him. But now they need to worry about the field goal more than the touchdown. 
Don't be surprised to see Penn State come up with a running play here. They go with the full house backfield. Play action pass. Collins for the end zone. Stop just short is Drayton after making the catch at about the one and a half yard line, maybe the two. It's a 22 yard gain. The calls of the coaches. Yes, they will have an effect. Not playing for the field goal. Paterno calls for the play action pass. Rick Minner has to be absolutely shocked. And Troy Drayton's a former wide receiver. So when he gets down the field, he knows what to do with the ball. But you can tell by how clean his jersey is. He really hasn't been that big of a factor in the ball game thus far. But in the clutch, it was Troy Drayton. That may be the biggest reception. Anderson, airborne, flipped over, short of the goal line to the one. I believe you're going to see that play called until they either stop them or they score a touchdown. You'll see Richie Anderson diving over the pile three more times if necessary. You wouldn't go for a tying field goal on fourth down? No. No. Not with the kind of year that Penn State has had. Loss on the play as Anderson tried the dive again, and it's third and goal. Don't understand that call. Anytime you start running sideways on this Notre Dame defense, they're just too fast. What you want to do is just try and attack them up the middle. The problem is they've lost so many lost yards on that play now. They're almost back to the four-yard line on the three-and-a-half. Now the dive over the top is no longer an option. See if they fake the dive and handoff on the trap again to Brian O'Neill. in deep trouble and he throws it away now you kick the field goal now you kick the field goal you're too far out fourth down and the field goal unit is on Nittany Lions lost their number one kicker Fayak to a back injury earlier this season and VJ Masillo is the kicker Masillo has hit his only two field goal attempts and Tom, this is the toughest angle for a right-footed kicker to try and come and pull it across his body. The tendency is to always hook it a little too much. Bobby Taylor blocked an extra point earlier, and Masillo bangs it through from 21 yards. Clutch kick by DJ Masillo, 21-yard field goal. And suddenly, it's not nearly as cold for the Nittany Lions at Notre Dame Stadium. We're tied at nine. Notre Dame football is brought to you by Subaru. It's what to drive. By Xerox, the document company. By State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And by Magnavox. Smart choices for smart people. The ingenious products from Magnavox. They're smart, very smart. Here's the key play in the Penn State drive. Third down and 20, Troy Drayton right here. They've got the full house backfield. Going to go with the play action face. Uh, fake Drayton down the field, going to go to the sideline. Here's the mistake. The freshman, Bobby Taylor, will bite to the inside. He has help over here on this side of the field, but he didn't allow it to happen. He bit on the inside fake, and Drayton was able to get open down the field. Here's a second look of the same play. Troy Drayton was able to burn the freshman. Bobby Taylor, the freshman from Longview, Texas. That was a big play for Penn State. They couldn't punch it into the end zone, but kick a tying field goal. And it's 9-9. Penn State has the only touchdown of the game, and the extra point was blocked. Here's that short kickoff again. Fair catch called for and taken by Nick Smith. Well, that's a sign of ultimate respect for Mike Miller. The ball only gets down to the 35-yard line. Even if you just 
kick it out of bounds and get it back to the 35. I don't think Joe Paterno particularly liked the kick. He wanted to poach it, but he wanted to get it a little further down the field. There's Miller, who was the deep return man, the speedy one for Notre Dame. Now, Rick Meyer passed up a chance to turn pro last year to return for his senior season on his final appearance on Notre Dame field, trying to direct a winning drive for the Irish. He hands to Bettis on first down, and Bettis gets five yards. No panic on the part of Notre Dame. A lot of time, eight minutes and 25 seconds here. Want to go back to what they do best, hand the ball to Jerome Bettis. He has the hot hand in this game. Bettis, the fullback, Brooks, the tailback. Bettis drew a crowd. Might have lost some yardage on the play. Phil Yaboa Cody, junior linebacker from Montreal, Canada. Stop in the backfield. With a big play for the defense. This would be a huge emotional lift for this Penn State defense if they could get off the field after just three plays, get the ball right back to their offense. They've got some momentum on the offensive side of the ball. Key third down play. Third and long. Third and seven exactly. Meyer to Smith. And Irv Smith fumbles the ball and Penn State recovers. Irv Smith just tried to do too much with the ball. Tom, one of the ironic parts of the game of football is the fact that there are times when you should allow yourself to be tackled. Here is one of those situations. Irv Smith had the ball, had the first down, just go down. Those extra two or three yards in that situation don't help you. And the likelihood of fumbling when you get in a crowd like this goes way up. And did you see Reggie Gibbons rip the ball free? Gibbons ripped it free of Smith and Gelheiser recovered. Anderson. Richie Anderson gains four yards to the 40-yard line of Notre Dame. Bryant Young on the tackle. And now it's Penn State that is in a position to win the game with 6.57 and counting. Seven minutes. We need about 15 yards to have a legitimate shot at a field goal. 6.50 to go in the ball game. Herb Smith, a couple of big mistakes in this one. Look back to those five turnovers against Stanford. The only loss of the season for the Irish here at Notre Dame Stadium. Anderson with a nice determined run. And Anderson carrying tacklers for a first down to the 31-yard line. He's their star, along with O.J. McDuffie. Now that offensive line starting to feel it. That's how you can tell that the traction is getting better on the football field. The offensive line is beginning to get a push now, not only for Penn State, but for Notre Dame as well. Richie Anderson, 25 carries, 73 yards in the game. First down, Penn State. Straight ahead to O'Neill. Got a yard at best. Top of the center of the Notre Dame defense, led by Brian Hamilton. Those quick traps, they either hit for big gains or they get stuffed right at the line of scrimmage. That time, Hamilton doing a nice job of diagnosing the play. He made his first career start just a few weeks ago against Navy and has been doing a good job since. It's complete. McDuffie inside the 15. Jack Burris finally wrestled him down with help from Devon McDonald, but a 16-yard strike to O.J. McDuffie. They came with the blitz, and that took away the underneath coverage, allowing McDuffie to come up with the quick catch. Again, right back to the stars. It's been a show between O.J. McDuffie and Richie Anderson. Those are the two players you want to handle the football now. O.J. 
OJ after OJ Simpson, the year Juice won the Heisman Trophy, the year after. And Anderson with a couple of yards on the carry. OJ McDuffie named by his grandmother. And she couldn't go for the Orenthal James, though. She went for Otis James, but still OJ after the Juice. You won't see Joe Paterno put the ball in the air again. There's uh, under five minutes and counting now. Two more runs, attempt the field goal, try and come out of here with a 12 to nine win. touchdown play simply man blocking doubling down on the nose sealing out here on the end and Demetrius DeBose going to overrun the play the quick handoff Demetrius DeBose ran himself out of position now let's take a look at why he ran himself out of position he's going to look down at his armband and check something I don't know exactly what it is but there you can see it that's where they have the defensive the plays. calls yeah and DeBose was not ready for the snap of the ball. Remember when Rick Minter took over as defensive coordinator, he instituted a system where the defensive calls are on the wristband, similar to what a quarterback on offense would wear. So they make some signals from the sidelines, and then the players check their wristbands for the call. But why, why is he checking it then? I mean, it wasn't a no huddle. It wasn't a surprise at the line type of play. I had plenty of time to look at that wristband. Look at this. They put Brooks in that spot where the ball's been going, and Brooks makes the catch and returns it. Across the 35 to the 36 yard line. They put Brooks in the spot where the kickoff has been coming. Well, it's 16 to 9. Why is it not eight points instead of only seven? Because of a blocked extra point on Penn State's first touchdown. It was Bobby Taylor, the freshman, that got airborne to deflect the extra point attempt. And so Notre Dame with a touchdown and a two point conversion can still win the game. Don't forget the two-point conversion is still a possibility. Pass deflected. One of the Notre Dame linemen is trying to knock it to the turf. He can't catch it, of course, and that will go incomplete as Meyer took a hit. That was a great play by Todd Norman. Watch this ball get tipped in the air. Everybody is free. Meyer gets racked on the play. But then Todd Norman's going to reach up and strip the ball out of the air and force it to the ground. That could have very easily been intercepted. Notre Dame has scored 49 touchdowns this season. They have not scored a touchdown today. Only three field goals. It's been since 1987 since they didn't score a touchdown. Screen pass. Bettis. Blockers in front. Bettis to the outside. Bettis knocked out of bounds at the 42-yard line by Lee Rubin. like Jerome Bettis may be hurt on the play. There's another player out on the field that looks like he's hurt as well. Right at the end of the play, he's going to get, looks like that, I can't tell if it's the ankle, the knee, don't even want to guess. 
Well, this would be a tremendous blow if Jerome Bettis, who just ripped off 22 yards, would have to leave the game. And meanwhile, it is Ray Griggs, one of the wide receivers, that's helped from the field as well. But that puts Mike Miller in the ball game, the fastest player they have on their team. Lake Dawson, Mike Miller going to the top of the field, both on the same side of the ball. There's Miller, number 83. He's in the slot left. Meyer collides with the man he was thinking to and is sacked back to the 49-yard line. Fifth sack of the day for Penn State. Rich McKenzie made that play. Rich McKenzie didn't like what happened at the end of that play either. He and Lytle got tangled up. Dean Lytle just a play action pass and they run into each other. One of the problems when you deal with a backup, you don't get all the time and don't get all the work. See what Myers reaction here is at the end of the play. No wonder he didn't like it. <laughs> Second and 16 now. Versus his field. Miller's open. But Meyer will run. Knocked ahead five yards. Let's see where they spot the football. He will be inside the 35 of Penn State. Derek Bonner gave him a shot, but it propelled him ahead. What a weapon when you have a quarterback that can run. Rick Meyer able to get outside, make something happen on his own. Now third and very short for Notre Dame. And Bettis is back in. There's the six on the back of Jerome Bettis. It's going to be third down in less than a yard. Jeff Burris is also in. They'll go to that power full house T backfield. Brooks, Bettis, Burris. Bettis. That'll be close. I don't believe he got it. Brian Gelheiser on the tackle for Penn State. They'll stop the clock to measure. That's a break for Notre Dame. New Holtz not having to use one of his three remaining timeouts. And now he did use the timeout. So Lou Holtz calls timeout. It could be fourth down coming up depending on the outcome of the measurement. We'll be back. 221 left in the game, 16-9 Penn State leading. Good news for Notre Dame. By the nose of the football, they have picked up a first down. But bad news may be, you saw that snow, the only really snow remaining on the field is in the end zone where Notre Dame is trying to reach. Spread formation. Maybe trying to open up a little room for Jerome Bettis. Here's Brooks, who lined up as a wide receiver. They threw it for him, but he was surrounded by white jerseys. Now a penalty marker is down. Could have had linemen downfield on that one. Loop and Fatty broke up the play. That's exactly right. An eligible receiver down the field. Give credit to Loop and Fatty for making the play. This is the flanker screen that Notre Dame has used throughout the course of the season. Has had a couple of long touchdown passes on it. You'll see the offensive lineman anticipating that the ball would be thrown there, but it wasn't because of Ben Foddy. They're way downfield. An easy call for the officials. Repeat first down. So set the ball back to the 38-yard line. It'll be first and 15 for the Irish. Pass across the middle. Reception made by Ray Griggs. That'll be a Notre Dame first down. Liam Rubin tackled Griggs after 17 yards. Conservative play in the Penn State secondary, a zone defense. Really no one clearing out the deep man. He had a chance to come up and jump the play. But Rick Meyer with that strong arm able to zip it into Ray Griggs. Draw play Brooks to the outside. Reggie Brooks trying to make a cut and couldn't in the snow. Still got about five yards to the 15. Reggie Givens with another Penn State tackle. And now inside two minutes. And they did charge Notre Dame with the timeout, even though they were coming on the field for the measurement. Only two remaining now for Notre Dame. Plenty of time to operate. 
takes that once again. Meyer has to scramble. Thought about passing. Now runs out of bounds at the 10. That should be enough for another Notre Dame first down. Tom, if he hadn't taken the time to make one more look down the field, he may have been able to turn the corner. He hesitated to look back across the field to see if he can find a wide receiver, and it may have cost him a touchdown. Take a look. Watch him hesitate here. And by doing that, he wasn't quite able to turn the corner. Probably wouldn't have scored, but may have had it down to the five-yard line. The Irish hopes for a top five finish in the country hanging in the balance with 1.14 left in the clock. They trail Penn State 16-9. First and goal at the nine-yard line. Brooks, Bettis, blocking for him. Brooks shook one tackler and is inside the five. Phil Yaboa Cody made the saving tackle as Reggie Brooks now inside the minute, and Lou Holtz has to be thinking ahead. The two-point play, should they score? You know that they have a two-point play that they've practiced week after week, but they have to score first. In the late afternoon chill of Notre Dame Stadium, Lou Holtz pacing the sideline, hoping for a touchdown, and then Chris, no doubt, a two-point conversion. I don't think he would kick for the tie. In, in this situation, Tom, I look for one of two things. Either a straight dive up the middle, middle because of the field conditions or sprint Rick Meyer on the court. Second and goal from just inside the five. Meyer on the option. Fake the pitch. Cut up field. And is only to the four-yard line. Little, if any, gain on the play. Clock continues to roll. Notre Dame with one timeout left. A surprising call by Lou Holtz. They've tried the option three or four times today. It hasn't worked. He comes back with it here on the goal line. Now you almost have to try and sprint Rick Meyer on the corner. Although they don't have the type of formation for that. Full house team. Fake it. Meyer looks to throw. Incomplete intended for Brooks. It'll be fourth down. Bring the wide receivers back in the game now. Spread out the defense. Put Rick Meyer on the corner. Give him a chance to either throw the ball in the end zone or run it in himself. Rick Meyer, who wears the same number three that Joe Montana made with so many great comebacks here at Notre Dame, in his final appearance at Notre Dame Stadium, trying to pull this one out. Notre Dame takes a timeout to discuss the play call. That's their final timeout. Good decision. No reason to save that timeout. I, I'm sure that they've got a two-point play that they've uh, practiced time after time during the course of every single week of the season. So that one's already set in stone. This one is not. Probably going to see him come in with three to four wide receivers, spread the field. They're on the near hash, which gives Rick Meyer plenty of room to operate. The negative side of this is that he's a right-handed quarterback, so he's going to have to be able to turn his shoulders up the field, a much tougher pass for Rick Meyer as a right-handed quarterback. Joe Paterno on the other sideline defensively, they're saying the same thing. They're going to work the wide side of the field. Joe is a zone defense type of man. He will flood that area with as many bodies as he can come up with and try and defend against Rick Meyer. Fourth and goal. The ball on the Penn State four-yard line. Nittany Lions leading 16-9, 25 seconds left. the right 
have to move the ball to either hash mark that they choose. They choose the left hash mark. 16, 15, 20 seconds left. Notre Dame will go for the two-point conversion. Tom, they've taken it back right to the middle of the field now. Trips left. Bettis right. kicking off here from the 20-yard line. They got penal, uh, penalized for the celebration. I apologize. They, But Penn State has three timeouts remaining. 20 seconds to go in this game, and Notre Dame only has a one-point lead. It's not over. Hendrick, squid kick, picked up on the bounce. And Penn State will start from midfield. Need about 20 yards here, and you cannot afford to have a penalty. The Notre Dame players need to just get off the field. Here's the play. Here's the two-point play. Rick Meyer sets it up. The athletic ability, finding Reggie Brooks, who has made so many plays for Notre Dame this year. He makes a big one. Now the pressure shifts to Notre Dame defense. Sideline pattern, out of bounds, no catch. Why would they go short like that when they have three timeouts left? Especially when they had Troy Drayton right, wide open across the middle of the field. You don't have to throw for the sidelines. They've got three timeouts, time not a factor. Now nine seconds. They cannot throw short here. It has to be an intermediate type of route, at least 20 yards down the field. McDuffie to the boundary. Collins pucked once and then threw it away. Now only three seconds left. Remember now that Kerry Collins is a pitcher. He has an 89 mile per hour fastball. 
plenty of heat. So he will have no problem getting this ball into the end zone. You have to buy it some time. There's no time now for a pass play and a field goal. You have to go with the Hail Mary down the field. Joe Paterno wants a timeout to talk about it. Joe Paterno told us his quarterback, Kerry Collins, was a leader, very smart, had a very strong arm, but he lacks experience and accuracy. Two of the things you might need in this situation. And we saw the lack of experience there on first down. With 15 seconds, they had plenty of time. Needed to dump the ball off over the middle to Troy Drayton. He uh, looked to the sideline, feeling like he had to have a ball that could be caught and out of bounds. That was not the case with three timeouts. Now defensively for Notre Dame, you just back up everybody. They can't beat you without a penalty. Don't forget, though, that should there be a defensive foul, the game cannot end. So the last thing Notre Dame can have afford to happen here is a pass interference play. Pass interference down the field would give Notre, uh, Penn State a chance to kick the game-winning field goal. And take a look at the defense deployed by Notre Dame here. They have eight people deep. There'll be more than that in just a minute. Let's it go. Out of bounds. Notre Dame wins. Some great wins. Where would you put this one? I, I thought that our hey, hey, down. Down. I thought our kids showed great character. They came back, they hang in. I thought that it was just a wonderful victory to be part of because it was a never say die attitude. And the guys at Dino did it for you all year. Meyer and Brooks came through again on that play. Boy, I want to tell you what, though, we used up every fourth down play and two point conversion we've ever thought about, but it was a great win. I'm happy for our team, and our defense really played outstanding. Congratulations, Coach, and a great Thank you. Yeah. And Joe Paterno's Nittany Lions gave it their best shot. The traditional salute, the helmets raised to the students. And at Notre Dame, final home game of 1992, and it came down to the seniors making their final appearance. Fourth and goal from the four, Meyer to Bettis for the touchdown. Two-point conversion, Meyer to Brooks. All seniors, all contributing, setting off this massive celebration. And I'm happy for Rick Meyer, a young man that came back to Notre Dame for all the right reasons. Wanted to finish his education, wanted to help the university that had done so much for him, try to win a national championship. They probably won't get that, but certainly a moment to remember for Rick Meyer. And so the Penn State Notre Dame series ends forever, tied eight, eight, and one. Remember Rick let's Meyer get, get, right. in the infirmary yesterday, couldn't keep his food down. In here. Rick, what a fantastic win. Is this the highlight of your seat? It's got to be the highlight of my career. You know, we have beat these guys since I've been here playing, and uh, this, is, this is everything. You know, a guy named Debo showed up on defense, and those guys all rallied. I love it. Mike, what happened on the two-point conversion? I can't hear you. Mike, what happened on the two point Irvin to go to the left side. I couldn't find anybody. Uh, you know, I don't have it. I haven't figured it out yet. What happened, but it's, it's all a good feeling. I know that you yesterday were quite ill. How are you feeling coming into the game? They look fine. I haven't felt good in the last 24 hours, but I got a good feeling. 24. All right, thanks a lot. Rick Myers, this series in record book, steady even at 8 1 and 1. Rick Meyer, Notre Dame's all-time total offense leader with the clutch play, the closing drive of the game to pull out the victory for the Irons. Well, you couldn't hear him, but you could tell by the smile on his face that he's feeling pretty <laughs> Got good. Got the idea, didn't he? That's right. 
indeed they did play like a champion today. Well, this is an amazing scene on the field. Almost the entire crowd now out on the field and Demetrius DeBose may never get to the locker room. And I don't think he wants to. <laughs> well, that's the spirit of Notre Dame. You've heard about it a lot. You're seeing it in action. If the band starts playing a few tunes, they may never leave. Bands out there, but they're having a hard time getting lined up. There's so many people on the field. They crank into the fight song. This place will go bananas. John Dockery is with oh, Reggie Brooks. Way to win. What a dramatic way to end your. Uh, home football career. Tell me about the play. Tell me about the catch. It was a, um, I just had a crossing route, and I just had, I, I saw Rick scrambling, so I scram ran over there to get open, and he threw a great pass, and I, all I had to do was catch it. I just thank God he gave me, just gave me this opportunity to go out and a winner. It wasn't exactly designed that way. He was running around back there for a while, and you get open. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, you just, when the quarterback scrambles, you go back. How, what was it designed for? Who was it designed to go to? It wasn't to? any particular person. It just got open. Just spread it out and find you. That was it? Yes. Congratulations on a fantastic Reggie. Okay, back to you, Tom. Reggie Brooks. Coach Holt said he knew they'd have great play at tailback, but even he didn't anticipate the season that young man has had. The traditional touch of the play like a champion sign in the tunnel that leads to Notre Dame Field. There you see Reggie Brooks. He has not given up the football. Caught the two point conversion that made the difference. Here's the play that won it for the Irish the two point conversion. There we go. Here's Reggie Brooks right here. He's going to come across the field and watch some of the action here. There's going to be a natural pick created so that Brooks can be sprung free. Watch Rick Meyer's head. He's looking left all the way. He's trying to find someone on the left side of the ball. The entire defense shifts with his head, and that allowed Reggie Brooks to find the wide open spot in the right side of the end zone. The key to the play again, Rick Meyer, as he looked off the defense, a zone defense is taught to slide with the head of the quarterback, and that's what created the hole on the right side. The end of the play, Rick Meyer took a big shot, but he doesn't care. He deserves that moment. John Dockery has one of the defensive stars of the game for the Irish, Demetrius DuBose. None other than Captain Demetrius DuBose. Last game as a, a senior here in uh, South Bend. Can you describe the feeling? No, not really. Um, I can't describe it. It's, it's great just to be a part of Notre Dame, and I think really the tradition showed up today. Um, I, I can't say enough about the tradition, and, I, and I'm glad I came here, and that's just the way I wanted to end it. Um, I think I'm a part of something great, and that's always been my dream, and to come to Notre Dame and be a part of something real. And today, the spirit showed, and, and for all those guys that doubt Notre Dame and doubt the spirit, it's not phony. It exists. It not. certainly did, Demetrius. I have to ask you two questions. On the touchdown, it appeared, as we watched it on replay, that you were looking down at your wristband, maybe at the play. What happened there? Well, we went from, um, we checked, uh, we call, We have a huddle call, and there was a Tennessee call, and they checked the, uh, to Tennessee. See, and I looked at my car because I, I didn't see what the huddle call was. And um, wh when I looked down, they ran, they snapped the ball, and, and I was out of position. And that, it was actually my fault that they scored a touchdown. But um, you know, Rick Meyer led led those guys, and, 
and, and Jerome, and those guys played outstanding. I'm just happy to be a part of it. What a moment. Congratulations, Thank Demetrius DeBose. Okay, you. Tom, to you, Tom. Okay, John, let's take a look now at our Chevrolet players of the game. Reggie Givens, the outstanding linebacker from Penn State, and Rick Meyer from Notre Dame. In conjunction with this program, Chevrolet will contribute $2,000 to the National Association of Student Financial Aid Administrators for disbursement to deserving college students so that they may continue their education. Fourth and goal, a two-point conversion, and Notre Dame beats Penn State 17-16. Jim Lampley in New York. They did indeed wake up some echoes at Notre Dame Stadium today.